Hello, everybody. Welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Mike. I am Jay. And tonight, we're going to take your pants down slowly, inch by inch. We're going to stare deep into the abyss. And if it looks back, then we'll be in love. Time to play. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, we're going to do our 10 top 10 most anticipated movies of 2024. Was it a hard list for you to make, Jay? At, no, I, at first, I thought it was going to be hard. And then I actually started looking through them. And I was like, oh, yeah, that looks good. I like what you've done here. That's good. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, it's not that bad. I actually had... I've got 10, and then I had one, two, three, four, five. I had six honorable mentions. That's about what I have, too. Yeah, I have around six honorable mentions. It was, you know, dude, it's weird. I, I think it's because the strikes, partly because of the strikes and whatnot, but there's not a lot. I mean, com compared to years previous, there's not a lot. Hmm. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's not, like, nothing on here. Like, well, there might be, like, a few on my top 10 that I'm, like, super duper, holy shit, excited about, but most of it's, like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, three or four. I'm like really pumped about, and the rest of it, I'm like, that could be good. That could be good. I James guarantee you, our number today. one's exactly the same. I guarantee you, it is too, and it's <laughs> definitely going to be the the uh, uh, the latest Amy Schumer film. Mm -hmm. We both love those. She's so hilarious. I know. I can't wait. I don't know what it's called. She makes it my labia exist. quiver when I hear her call. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when your labia quivers. It gets so me all good. excited. Oh, oh by the way, dude, I, you've got to watch this. I don't know if everybody else has seen this. And if we're not going to get demonetized because it's an ad, it's not like it's a it's a copyrighted thing, dude. It's I thought it was fake, and then I looked it up. It's legit real. It's the funniest shit. Like it's like an SNL skit, but it, but it, but this was going to be your Christmas present. Now, like you probably already have one. It's called the Fleshy Pro YouTube ad. Oh, that sounds. Just funny. type in I'll... Fleshy Pro. Yeah, just type in Fleshy Pro, and it'll probably pull up YouTube ad, dude. It's I think it's like two and a half minutes. I started like it was, and it came on late at night last night, like one of those old like uh, Girls Gone Wild videos when you were a kid. And I started watching it, and I was like, "Is this real?" And it was like a legit thing. It's legit. You can buy it. But the way they did their ad was incredible. Uh, the Fleshy Pro 2.0. Yeah, I think that's it has cool. like a nerdy guy on the cover of it. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's take a look. See. It's so here. funny, dude. Let's see what's going on. This, this should be interesting. I was gonna get. I was like, Mike <laughs> needs this for Christmas, and me too. <laughs> no, because I don't want to get caught. Let's see what's going on. Okay, uh, Fleshy Pro YouTube ad. Stay. Then you need the new. Oh wait. Stay. Then you need the new and improved Fleshy Pro 2.0. It's the automatic, you know what, machine that turns a quick one into a near <laughs> mystical experience. Finally, no more begging her to slurp on the gherkin. <laughs> then, because it is time to become your own professional salad tosser. Ready to tweak that Twinkie. Prepare to bang <laughs> that Twinkie. Twink that twink 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 twink. This won't be any old choking of the chicken. Oh, no, no, no. With the Fleshy Pro, it truly will be a special date with Pamela Henderson. By Henderson. Sucking, tugging, and vibration. The Fleshy Pro replaces women faster than Leonardo DiCaprio. But don't take our word for it. Take the moaning compliments of thousands of men across the world. They swear by their fleshy pro. Is it because of our real skin sleeves that make it feel indistinguishable? Or is it <laughs> I love the way they they they, they, they like put the little um, things in there. Like <laughs> McGregor, maybe it's the revolutionary climax mode that'll suck down harder than a mosquito on a mission. I'm not ready for no, this. Actually. It's because of Todd and customer support. Todd ensures we always keep our promises. promises I can't believe they did. Every customer satisfied guarantee. Our speedy two days. You know that guy didn't know what ad he was in when he was smiling. Yeah. Packaging and our fast and friendly real people support. No AI here. Thank you very much, Elon. But what is that you say? Won't people laugh at me for owning a fleshy pro? <laughs> And so what? You're the kind of man who goes his own way. An explorer of pleasure. Cue the white snake. A conqueror of tattoos. <laughs> a hedonist who knows what he deserves. But does it really feel as good as a woman? No. It feels way better. <laughs> you may never see this video again. So scan the QR code or visit blowingyourownhorn.com for an immediate blowingyourownhorn.com discount. That's so cool. We've already sold out twice this year, so don't wait. It's time to make the ball what bang the cry. 
tote belt <laughs> plug and celebrate Palm Sunday. Scan the QR code or visit <laughs> blowingyourownhorn.com. This commercial was brought to you by Fleshy. For men, by men. Dude! It's that is still, a well, that's not, commercial. And that's not the one I watched. That's uh, that's a different one, but that's still funny as shit. Yeah, it's dude. Like, I cannot believe it. It's like some shit that would be on a RoboCop movie. <laughs> like you would see it like in the in the weird commercials in a robot yeah, movie. It's like Paul Verhoeven made that commercial. Yeah, or like it I would gotta, be like I do they should have got Ryan Reynolds to do the voiceover for it. Let's go to blowyourownhorn.com and see what happens. Okay, let me let me uh it does it doesn't pull up anything. It pulls up like a Japanese like ad thing. I'm gonna go to fleshy pro tube on Google and it'll pull up the website. Oh your fleshy, yeah. Uh, mm. most powerful on the mark. Here we go. Yeah, let me check. Let me double check and make sure. Are you over 18? Uh, I don't know if there's anything in it like that's weird. Like, I don't want to pull that up on stream because it might get us in trouble. You know, it's sketchy. They show it, and on one side, there's uh, yeah, I don't, I think it's it's not very safe to say. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't do it, but it's only $29. <clears throat> it's on sale. Talk about a great so, stocking stuffer for that uncle that just won't get out of the house. <laughs> it's on one end is a mouth. Yeah. And on the other end, you know, it's, they didn't yeah, show it's, it, yeah, they didn't show it in that ad in the, in the first ad they show it, but yeah, wow. it, looks, it looks like a, it looks like a insane contraption for your wiener hole. Holy, holy hell. What? So what website were you on when you saw this is the question. Uh, the I mean, Walmart.com. I was shopping for uh, things for people. Uh, no, Women's I, uh, perfume. That's what it was. No, I, yeah. I, I was on YouTube. I don't know what I, I was just watching. Uh, I don't know what the fuck I was watching. Like, I think it was a game. <laughs> yeah, you don't thing. know? I, You're not sure? No, I literally, it was like three, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning and it popped on. And I was like, this isn't like real. Like, it's gotta be like, <laughs> a, like a channel or something. And it was like legitimate. <laughs> and then I was like, Decker. then I looked at my calloused fingers and I was like, God, if there was only something that would help me there. And then I saw that maybe it was just a sign from God. Yeah, maybe it was definitely, it was it, the, your phone was listening to you. The AI caught you It knew what you wanted. Deep, I thought, it, I thought it was, I just thought it was funny because it looked like some shit like out of SNL or something. It didn't, it did not seem legitimate. And the fact that it was legitimate, I was like, that's a hell of a marketing team. That's, that's like a, to them. That's a marketing team with balls. They're like balls and dick. They're like we're gonna go all out. <laughs> now, if they only had one for men, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For men, it was made by men, for for men and they know men. what men like. <laughs> Maybe it made for men, but it's tough enough for a woman. <laughs> Courtney Reed, thanks, buddy. Says your take on Jonathan Ma Ma Jonathan Major's guilty verdict and its effect of upcoming films. I heard uh, he got found guilty on two of the four uh, charges. I think one of them wasn't one of them a misdemeanor. I uh, yes, I believe. <clears throat> so. I believe but it's still it's still not a good look. I don't. I think that Disney's and they're already in panic mode. They're probably. Good. I would say. Though Disney they announced. They announced tonight that they uh, they have removed him from the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. So that's fired. what I mean. The, you know, they're not going to put up with the headache that they saw that DC had with what's his face Ezra. I steal your wine and kidnap people, with Miller. Uh, <laughs> so I, they're not going to put up with that. And, and at this point, really, if Marvel or Disney MCU was smart, they would scrap the whole fucking thing and reboot somewhere. They would use Deadpool three as a as a um, as like a, a jumping board and use it to like open up the multiverse or whatever, and then bring in the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and just reboot the whole fucking thing. You can even make it where it's a funny joke that Deadpool kills the Marvel universe or he like resets yeah. everything. And then you can reboot the whole fucking thing at this point. Fuck it. Cause you're, your act three is screwed. I'd be into that. Yeah. Apparently some people think I read tonight that some people think that they've been reworking the script for a while. So they changed uh, Avengers is no longer called the Kang dynasty or whatever. Avengers yeah. is now called Avengers five and they've had, they hired a new writer for it a while ago uh, after all this stuff started. So a lot of people think that, that they always knew they were going to fire him either way, but they waited for the verdict to come out so that they had more just cause than before. Well, and, that's, you know, they learned that from Johnny Depp. Because that's yeah. what happened with Johnny Depp. They fired him before even anything had happened. That's true. And it's crazy because, I mean, I honestly, if this is a conduit for them to switch the, the villain from Kang to Doctor Doom, uh, I don't know if that's a bad thing for the Marvel Universe necessarily because that's far more interesting than where we were headed. I think, I feel it, like. well, listen, I wouldn't even do What I would do, Doctor Doom would be awesome. And Doctor Doom can be a planetary threat, which would be would, would require something like the Avengers to team up with x-men and avengers and all that shit x-men and uh, fantastic four but exactly. i would do something I, I would thinking. do i would do galactus yes because would then be you get silver surfer 
you get the surfer of silver who comes <laughs> with his own fleshlight because he's made of silver. <laughs> but yeah, I I would do that. Celebrate would, Palm Sunday. I would look. I I think Galactus would be like the, because how do you, you go from Thanos, who has the Infinity Gauntlet, which is like he's he's essentially God in the universe. And then you have to you have to team up to take him down. And you don't want I mean Doctor Doom is like I said, he's a major threat. But I would go I would go with Galactus just because there's so many cool I mean you get literally Silver Surfer. That's why I do it. Yeah, yeah. It was, and some people also think that maybe they're they're gonna keep it going and they're just gonna recast him. I think that's weird. I think the reason I don't think they're gonna recast him is because I think that no actor is gonna want that role. Because they're well, automatically going to be compared against what it would have been like if it was Jonathan Majors. It's automatically going to come with. And it's also sort of bad luck because everybody knows what if it happens twice. It's kind of like being on the cover of Madden, the Madden curse, like you're going to get injured. I don't feel like anybody's going to want that role. I think that, well, first off, and I mean, nothing against the, the particular character, Kang, the Conqueror. I mean, he's a decent character, but I never really thought, I mean, I know he can be a threat, like a, an Omega level threat. But I always thought he was kind of goofy. I never really liked his character when I was reading comic books back in the day. There are some good stories around the Kang dynasty, but I just didn't give a shit about it. Uh, he just feels like an uninspired kind of like goofy villain of the week overall. Like that wouldn't require the attention of something like the Avengers, X-Men and Fantastic Four. You look at something like Galactus, that would require it. Um, Victor Von Doom in, in a certain aspects or like even if they do, do the onslaught would be great where Charles Xavier basically loses his mind and becomes the the, the big, big beast that he becomes. Yeah, all that shit. Like, yeah. the, I, I don't care about Jimmy. Kang. I would move away from Kang. Jimmy Battlinsky in the chat says that Marvel's not going to pivot and change course. They're not DC where they panic and change course. I mean, that's literally what we've been hearing Marvel's been doing lately, though. And honestly, DC's problem was that they didn't pivot. They kept Amber Heard in Aquaman 2. They kept Ezra Miller around for The Flash. That's kind of the opposite of what DC did. Well, and that's <clears throat> the big question, really. Like, if Ezra Miller gets away with all the stuff that they've done, uh, and they don't fire him. And then now you have, let's just call it what it is. You've got a black man who has this come up and they fire him immediately. People are going to ask questions. It's just the facts. I mean, well, they, I'm not, I, I I'm not think, saying I, where I stand, but that's what people are going to say. I think it would just be like, you know, wait till the actual, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. And they, they fucked up with Johnny Depp. And I mean, I don't think it had because mm -hmm. he's black. I just think it's because he was the fact that they made a judgment not, call yeah, because Amber that. Heard said he did all this shit to me and they just believed her without any mm -hmm. kind of proof. But the other thing about it is, though, is also Marvel has been doing since Captain, uh, what is it, the Marvels that just came out. There was a fuck ton of reshoots in that movie. And they were doing this because there was all this other shit going on with Jonathan Majors. They didn't even know how to end the movie. Like they like and, you, and people that watched it, which I, I don't even give a shit about Captain Marvel. They said it's a mess. You can tell that all the reshoots and the rewrites because they were panicking. They didn't know which way to go. They, I don't know, dude. Like right now, the best option for them is is to pull up the brakes and be like, "All right, let's uh, let's let's realign what we're gonna do." And I think the best vehicle for them to do that with is Deadpool. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. But the, I mean, the only problem with Deadpool is that it's already written; it's already in the can. You no, no, I mean? well, like, they could do so, they could do something so simple, and it would fit in just perfectly with the Ryan Reynolds Deadpool. They could just do a quick little write in at the very end of the movie, where it's like after credits, and like there's a button that says "Explode the Universe" or some shit. I don't know, and, and he or maybe uh, Deadpool uh, Ryan Reynolds gets a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet somehow, and he snaps yeah. his fingers, and he's like, "What does this do? What if maybe, I had all this?" And he just snaps his finger. A reshoot with the uh, um, a reshoot with a post credit sequence, something that that simple, maybe. Yeah. Sure, I, I just think be, that Deadpool, a... and I don't know if they're still shooting Deadpool if they're done. I want to say that they wrapped on it. I could be wrong. No, they're not wrapped because they're still shooting. So I think it says I thought it said post production. Yeah, but like yeah, something that big is going to be. Uh, they couldn't change the script a during the SAG stuff because of the writer strike. So a lot of that stuff's going to remain the same, but you're right. I mean, I think that would be genius. Cause you, like you said, the Deadpool kills the Marvel universe is a huge fucking graphic novel. You know, it's a yeah, huge I mean, storyline. Cool. Like I know people get mad. Like, well, that's such a great comic book. Just save it for an actual movie. I mean, I get that. I'm just saying like the, the, the idea is there like that way they can reboot the whole fucking thing. They can yeah, flush no, it I all agree. out. You flush it out. Yeah. So. Flush it out. It's flush. <laughs> That's a great song, by the way. Everybody shits on that album from Metallica, and I'm not a huge Metallica guy, but I like Saint Anger. I think that's a good song. The drums sound like he's hitting pop cans, but that song's got that one. You feel my world shake. And he was, I can't look away. 
because he was Not eating pop cans. He was drunk and he forgot that he didn't have his drums. I'm like, we got pop cans. Yeah. So <laughs> I remember that that, that, uh, that uh, some kind of monster Metallica documentary where Lars was just back there. He's like, it's too stock, dude. It's too stock. Everything's too stock. And then James Hatfield runs in. He's like, my therapist says that I could only play from 4 to 4.42 p.m. every night. And they're all yelling at each other. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. You guys are so metal. It's crazy. Like the tampons just... I mean, are they not in the bathroom? Don't you need those? <laughs> but yeah, well, like, I, I actually, the thing about, I, I don't care about Metallica one or the other, but I always have like a little hate in my heart and fault for them because of the whole thing with Napster. I just think it was so fucking petty and how they handled that whole thing. I mean, it was just so stupid because generally speaking, I understand the pirating is bad and I get that. But at the same time, a lot of those people were going in, they were sampling that those those songs and they were going out and buying the albums or going to the shows, which they were giving money to the concert. So they were getting paid. So like, yeah. it, it, like maybe they didn't have the money to go out and buy a $25 CD for like back in the day, $25 for like one song that they didn't know if they'd even like. Yeah. And not just that, but the problem wasn't like, yes, was it hurting the music industry? Sure. But the problem wasn't ever Napster. The problem, if you want to take a stand, if you're a biggest band as Metallica is, if you want to take a stand, you should take a stand against, uh, against the, uh, uh, not movie studios. Keep wanting to say mu against the, the music distributors, the, um, why, why am I blanking out on this? What the record companies. Yeah, the so record they, take a stand against the record companies because they've been fucking over artists for years. Don't well, take a stand what, against fans. Don't, well, don't take, what about what about the, uh, the, the like ticket masters and shit like that where they yeah. overcharge people for oh, like and then they can't get refunds and shit if they can't or you have to go through hell to even get a refund. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a fucking huge monopoly on that shit anyway. But either way, I, I think that what was it? Lars that that was the leading head of the of a, a, the attack on Napster. I think he even came yeah. out a few years ago and apologized for it because he's like, yeah, we, we handled that wrong. I was like, yeah, because yeah. you guys are supposed to be a fucking metal rock, bro. Yeah, fuck yeah. Especially I suck for the, the devil's people. dick. Yeah. And then you're like, they're stealing money from me. Pirates are bad. Fuck you, <laughs> I hate pirates. And I'm going <laughs> yeah, to my I was room. Like, Someone take off your dress and stop having a tea party for yourself. Shut the fuck up, you multimillionaire. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about you're having a crummy day. Agreed. And also, Blink-182 is a better band. JK, woo! Says, I want to hear Chalice and Loomis sing One Week by Bare Naked Ladies. I kid, I kid. What's your guys' all-time favorite comedy movie? I was uh, ready, so. Um, All-time favorite comedy movie? That's a hard one. There's, like, so many of them. That's just, that's just, like, that's a harder question than saying what's your favorite horror movie to me. Because I, is, there's just, there's so, there's so many of them, and you can be in certain moods to watch. I mean, you got fucking, like, uh, Ace Ventura. You got Tommy Boy. You got Step Brothers, you got Anchorman. I mean, T Tropic Thunder and some, I mean, Talladega Nights. There's a fuck ton of them. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, you're right. It's, it's also an impossible question to ask. I'm just going to go with one that nobody expects. And it's probably the most rewatched comedy of my entire life. And that's Liar Liar. I'm, I'm Ace Ventura, probably High Dumb and Dumber. Whatever it is, it's a Jim Carrey movie. But Liar Liar is like, yeah. I've found that more rewatchable than any movie in history, you know? Uh, well, if I well, yeah, okay. Well, if I have to pick one, then it then it's got it's it'd be Grandma's Boy. I, I probably watched that That's one a fuck ton of times. A so lot of people don't like it as much as me, just because. But I, I do. I like that. She goes, then I break smoking lamp, like all the little like <laughs> like cameos, like Schneider and that, and then fucking uh, David Spade. He was like, okay, whatever. Guy blows like Shiloh, fucking red shirted ass. It's Shiloh. <laughs> I mall rats is up there for me too. Mall rats. Uh, it's like clerk. one side red. But you guys just think because a guy reads some comments, he can't fuck some shit up. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a great question, man. There's there's a lot of great ones. We need to do a comedy tier list one night. Um, that'd be hard. That's no probably, that's, that'd probably be the hardest list we've ever done. It would be difficult. Yes, Stephen. Uh, it's been one week since you looked at me. Michael Parton says Sonic the Hedgehogs 3 is my number one anticipated movie of 2024. Well, that's fucking wonderful, Michael. Uh, I, 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 to be fair, I haven't, even, I haven't. Yeah, he's the main bad guy. I haven't seen the first two. He was in the first two, but is he in the third one? I think so. I mean, I, he was like the one of the bigger draws. Like everybody said, he was great. Uh, uh, Mister, uh, Mister, Mister Roboto, Domo, <laughs> Robotnik. Domo. No, what was it? Robotnik. Yeah, Doctor Robotnik. Yeah, dude, he was so good in that first one. <laughs> and that guy brings that coffee. He's like, "Thank you. I love the way you make them." Uh, Jim he's Carrey. It's cool. always good to see Jim Carrey. I didn't. I don't. I didn't like the second Sonic. I, everybody else loved that. I thought it was kind of a step down from the first one, but. Who am I? I? I do love James Marston, though. You know. Yeah, I haven't seen him. Um, uh, Mr. Joey Henderson says, "Thanks, buddy." He says Deadpool three and Joker two are the only CBMs that stands for condoms by men. Uh, I, thought said, I, thought, I, saw, I thought it says cock butt men's, but okay. Oh, cog in the butt. Cock, cock butt men. 
for to dive to seven. Uh, yeah. CBM is like chill, baby mama. That's what you say to your baby mama in the text. <laughs> yeah. it's like, CBM, chill, Daddy baby mama. Chill. Daddy chill. Um, you know what? Shocking low amount of superhero movies. And I think that's a good thing for the world right now. 2024 does not have a lot of superhero movies. I won't unveil what mine are, um, but yeah, dude, very dude. little in the superhero. And that's a good a, thing. You're, you're like a, I don't know. I didn't know this man. Holy shit. You watch Matt Walsh. You're a, you're a dedicated fan of Matt Walsh. That's literally what Matt Walsh said. But he, he said that he didn't Walsh. think movies have been Matt Walsh is a conservative. Like uh, he's like on the daily wire, Ben Shapiro guy. But he, he he was saying the same thing. He you said wouldn't that know he, that you fucking MAGA. Uh, you know what? Uh, fuck you. Uh, no, uh, no. I would say that. Um, no, he said something like that. Movies haven't been good since two thousand seven because of all the spandex and superhero flying around bullshit. That's a very general statement. That well, he said that. Well, he said the last good that. movie. I think it, they were talking about No Country for Old Men, and and actually it was a true thing. He said the movie was not about, and I agree, the movie wasn't about the uh, James Brolin character. It was about Tommy Lee Jones and his redemptive arc. It, the James Brolin character was just the side character. Yeah. And then somebody I mean, said, I think, uh, I think somebody, the reason why I even knew that what you were talking about, the superhero stuff, was because he said, uh, someone in the, I guess on his Twitter feed said, like, oh, you're so, you're so uninformed or, or something like that about superhero movies. He goes, I'm sorry there wasn't enough explosions of people and grown adults in superhero spandex flying around shooting laser guns that you couldn't enjoy the movie. <laughs> I, I, I just, I mean, I am superhero fatigued. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if everybody would admit it, but I think we're all a little superhero fatigued. So I don't mind it. James Gunn even said, uh, I only saw the headline. So beat I'm me not. in the butt with a stick if I'm wrong. But I James Gunn more. even said, he was like, I think it's a good thing that 2024, it's a great thing for the reboot of DC that 24, 24 doesn't have much DC in it. Cause it gets like, it's like a fresh start. I'm not like, you know? I'm not, well, I guess I'm, I'm like borderline superhero fatigue. What well, I just want smarter superhero movies. Like That's I want, fair. I want yeah. like I want superhero movies that aren't the same fucking cookie cutter, uh, like I like identical movie from the last movie. Like I don't want that. Like I would like to see a Spawn reboot, a true horrific like awesome Spawn movie set in yeah. that universe. And then I also would like to see like you know back in the day when they made Blade and shit like that. Like those kind of movies come back. Daredevil even like they, I know yeah. that sucked. But they took chances and stuff. I want to see that. Like, literally right. a formula was made at Marvel. And they were like, all right, well, this formula works. This is how you make the cake. We'll bake this bitch and we'll serve it up and nobody will question it. And that's, that's understandable. Happened. I see what you're saying. I do see what you're saying. But, I mean, based on how the superhero movies have been the past few years, I mean, how they're going, the rate that they're going. I mean, I, I think even you'd be a little superhero fatigued Well, right no, now. dude. Uh, if they go, like, you know, I, I love Chronicle. I thought Chronicle was fucking awesome. Right, that's like not, 10 years ago, though. Well, I know. Well, it, what, the one with the evil Superman or Superboy kid. Brightburn. It was like five years ago. Well, too. that's not long. I mean, I, like, I think that they can still, like, I even like the new Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. They did a great job yeah. with that. They did, so they I'm just saying, like, I feel like, uh, I feel like if you just get, like, smarter superhero movies, I think people will be fine. Just not yeah. the same bullshit. I put a, I put a poll up in the chat by the way. Are you guys superhero fatigued? Just just yes or no, just in between. I I feel like I I, mean, I think like the Bob Iger coming out and being like, "Hey, we're fucking up the way we're doing shit and changing everything at Marvel is the biggest thing ever because like Marvel was never they would never admit no. You're going to watch the Eternals. You're going to fucking watch the Marvel. No. You're going to like it, god damn it, cuz we put it out there and, I and like it the, doesn't I, matter. I, I'll be able, I'll be honest. The, I like the Eternals better than Shang-Chi cuz I didn't like Shang-Chi at all, but the Eternals I didn't was, watch the Eternals. Well, the, the, it's, dude, it's it's one of the, it's like trying to be the Avengers and have you care about everybody with like it, it, it it's like dropping you in the middle of act 2. Because it's such a long movie and there's so many backstories they're trying to rush in. Yeah. Like it's not yeah, like so no, this, it, they all acted well and it was cool kind of, but then it was like what the fuck is going on? Like, why should I give a shit about you? And then they got like Harry Styles showing up at the end as Star Fox. <laughs> like, sing us a fucking song, you clown. I don't want to fucking see you. Yeah. I, let me ask you this. Um, Aquaman, you going to see it in the theater? I liked Aquaman. I don't think I'll see it in the, the theater. Second, though. It's this weekend. It comes no, out I know. I don't think I'll see it in the theater. I don't want to see Amber Turd at all. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't, I mean, I, that's not gonna, I'm just gonna be like, hey, there's that chick, I don't care. But like, I'm not gonna go see it. I'm not She's gonna go see it. I don't, I don't care. It see looks like bitch. a fucking cartoon. It looks like a fucking well, cartoon. Well, you didn't like the first Aquaman. You said the same thing. So I didn't think you'd like to see it. If this one looks even worse. Like, are we gonna have him coming out of the ocean to Pitbull again? Like, what is the, what are we doing? The weird we thing about, the, I don't even know why, the, I don't, why did they, they did something weird to Patrick Wilson's face. Like he looks CG'd into the movie. Like I don't I know what like the fuck that, I don't know what I don't know if that's because they tried to de-age him. He looks strange in the trailer. I don't know what that is. But no, I like Aquaman for what it was. I mean, look, it was a surfer 
whatever fucking who gives a shit in some vein it's 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 a wish.com version of thor which a lot of people shit on thor the the first thor they thought it was the same magical shit never ending story they thought it was the same cartoony thing uh, people are claiming about aquaman aquaman just executed in a you know in a poorer way i I think it's just the look aquaman for me aquaman the look of it it looks cg like thor didn't look that nearly as cg it looked like it was just like fantastical well also thor had better actors i mean uh what's his name uh tom hiddleston is an incredible like and and also they had anthony hopkins you know amazing but I also, yeah. I will say Joker 2 is not even on my list. I, mm-hmm. I thought good and hard about it. I I wanted to put it on my list. And I was like, no, nah, I can't. I'm too scared. I, I'm not really, I am in a way anticipating, but I'm not. Because I don't I don't know if it's going to be, I like, I, I don't know. It's a musical, dude. Like, that's the only thing I'm scared of. It didn't make my list either. I, I yeah, it's just, it's a complete unknown for me. Like, I don't, I just don't know. You're right. The fact, I don't, I don't like musicals in general. Yeah. And I feel like that movie is either going to be great or it's going to be a fucking <clears throat> It's like sticking your Bomb. dick in a glory hole. You just don't know. You don't know what's yeah. going to be on the other side. Because musical fans aren't going to want to go see that story. So I don't like, know, dude. There's a lot of people who like that story generally aren't musical fans. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm not poo-pooing it because it could be great. But like, fuck, it doesn't seem. I don't understand. They, I don't understand. They thought that you know you get those like little like um, bow tie. Oh my god! Like the the Broadway kind of like goers and like this was a comic book. And they've done something really incredible with it. I'm actually yeah. intrigued by it. Like you could get that crowd going to see a musical. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I like musicals to a degree, but I don't. I'm a, I'm I'm of two opinions on it, dude. Like Joker two doesn't really make sense in some ways for me, and in other ways I did want to see it, but I didn't want to see it as a musical. I don't know. Yeah, I, I get you. It's gonna be fucking weird, man. I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna work out. Rootin' tootin' Texas tootin' Jay, will you read this one? I gotta grab a drink real quick. All right. Uh, how you doing, Rootin' Tootin'? Hope you got good going on with your parole officer. He says uh, the shine's speaking to me. The shine, the moonshine, that is. It says Nosferatu is going to be the hottest thing since pickled wieners. Hell yeah, brother. Anyway, go watch Star Trek TNG, Night Terrors. Great episode. Lots of horror elements done. Very good, boy. Yeah, now i tell you what, Rootin' Tootin', I, I think I know what you're talking about, Star Trek Next Generation, them, uh, them Night Terrors. I think I remember something about that. It's been a minute. I might have a little shine in my, in my head going on right now as well, but I do think you're all correct. Uh, but yeah, thank you, uh, Root and Tootin. Star Trek The Next Generation did do some really good episodes that were uh, horror-inspired, and I, I do remember that one was a good one. I can't remember the specifics of it. I, I, I just watched TNG, like, the, the whole, like, seven seasons, like, three years ago. I know it's been a while, two years ago. But I can't remember that episode. But I know, I, I do remember, like, it was a good one. There was another one, too, where they introduced, like, that I found horror, that had horror elements in it, when they introduced the Borg for the first time. That shit was fucking kind of scary. So yeah, a hundred percent. And and I, I but uh, you know, Nosferatu is on my list. I don't, I can't tell you where Nosferatu is Spoilers, on Spoilers, you sluts. It's on my list. I didn't say where on my list. It's in my, it's in my list. What? But Sean, yeah, tell me one, right. two, three. Oh, sorry, what? No, he's right. Uh, Night Terrors, the Star Trek Next Generation Night Terrors episode is, re- is really good. I've not seen that one. I once wanted to go back and watch all the Star Trek episodes and then I ate nachos and fell asleep. Well, no, you uh, you start you start to... with the original series, which you're not going to yeah. that's that's the problem. I'm too much of a completist. I can't make myself not. Uh Sean Tubby 123 says one sup sexy sup man. Uh number 2 sup, school is over you cocks. Thanks y'all oh. for making me laugh. Keep my spirits up during the semester. Love y'all and thank you. Hey, hey thanks, thanks for hanging out with us, man. I'm glad it's all yeah. over and done with. Now you got to look forward to all that fat juicy goddamn gravy covered student load payback. Oh, I yeah. Where else? <laughs> yeah, it's so hot. It's so fucking hot. It's hey, man, but congratulations, dude. Yeah, hell I yeah, wish to God I could well go done. back in time and just slap my fucking self in the face. Like, don't go to college, you stupid asshole. It's Cheers, not gonna pal. be shit for you. I'm kidding. It's, I it, went it, for, it's good for other people. I went for a couple weeks. Yeah, depending on what you're gonna do with your life, definitely. Yeah, I just did. I might as well. Piece. My shit was the equivalent of doing fucking women's studies of the 16th century. <laughs> what, what I got, Jay got, I got his a, diploma and was like, you know what? I'm not doing that. (laughs) No, I got my diploma. And they're like, you can't do shit with this until you go back to school for another four fucking years and spend another $150,000. Yeah, it's fair. And then they'll get you on that too. Tyler Paulson, I love your pumpkin. And that's no way uh, about your icon pictures, just in general. Hi, guys. So glad I could catch the stream tonight. Growing up, I didn't really have any friends in the horror. So it's nice to have you two, Dave, Wolfman, Jimmy, et cetera, to hang out with. Cheers from Wisconsin. You rock. Thanks, Taylor. I don't know who those other guys are. Are they part of like some kind of boy band in the 90s? But thank you for coming and and dropping a Jimmy nice Ewell. comment. Yeah, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy oh, yeah, I Dave met him Mustaine. once. No, uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's cool, man. We, uh, Mike and I, um, and my brother were the only three that I remember that we hung out and watched horror movies and talked about horror movies. We were yeah. kids 
12 and 13 years old, we were like having debates about Michael Myers versus Jason all the way back then and like who would win and shit like that. But yeah, it was just us three. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, Thank dude. you for and being now, a part of the crowd. Yeah. Now, thanks to people like you, Taylor, we get to do it all the fucking time, pal. So thank you, man. We should be thanking you. Appreciate that. Crease Fold, we going to Sizzler. We going to Sizzler. That's a great one, dude. White Man Can't Jump. That's a great comedy yeah. classic right there. The remake was even better, actually. Um, so I'm no, kidding. Down here, baby. I'm kidding. The, the wind shift from left to the right. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. I, I never watched. I did not watch the, the remake. remake. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, don't I care. Shit. Not one bit. I saw an article. I, I put this on Twitter. I, I was reading articles. I was looking at You like, didn't see uh, it. You were racist. Is that what it said? <laughs> pretty much. Uh, it, oh, it said uh, it, it was an article about sequels that were better than the original movies. And this article said the remake of Candyman, or sorry, it's not a remake. The Candyman, recent Candyman movie was better than the original because it has a much clearer message. And I'm like, bitch, oh new dead. That's why you can't appreciate the messages that were subtle back then because now they got to smack you in the face and stick a finger up your butt to let you know that you're awake. Um, yeah, and then the, they also said that Prey was better than Predator. Fucking, <laughs> these are these are obvious, like like you know, like it's like um, it's like those those dumbasses that post like stupid ass questions on Quora, and they're like, "My husband got my seventeen year old stepdaughter pregnant. What should I do?" They're not real. This is all bullshit. These are like like students that are trying to get a reaction out of people, and most people call them out on it. These are motherfuckers that are trying to get clicks on their on their articles yeah. by saying something Some really obviously stupid and inflammatory you know like 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 you know like biden is okay uh, like obviously no one's going to believe you you know what i mean Ray was good but it doesn't it it doesn't even it's not even in the same fucking country as predator are you shitting me that was, just, people just don't appreciate the fuck classes I, i'm more don't. mad about the whole candy man reboot reimagining bullshit better than tony todd's original candy man you're out of your fucking yeah. mind it's crazy it's crazy where we're your living, but fucking mind, bro. I don't. Th I honestly don't think they're doing it for clicks. I think people believe that, and I got a couple of responses like, "Actually, they speak of the truth." I'm like, "Actually, you should stop watching movies and go sit in a fridge. Don't do your that. mom called. Dangerous. Pick up some paper towels on your way home. I'm almost done here. <laughs> I'm just gotta be, believe what you got. I just don't. I can't. I, wow. Uh, not gonna take movie recommendations from that guy, James Batterker. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, mm -hmm. I like your whole vibe. I don't know what it is about you. I like your name. I like your picture. I like the way you taste. Hey, fellas. I hope you're of eight. That would have been awkward. Hey, fellas. Hope you're having a good day. Can we get Christopher Walken arguing with Richard Simmons about BK versus McDonald's? <laughs> what? Never uh, done. LOL. Also, <clears throat> Peter Cullen, voice of Optimus, won a lifetime award last night. Well, sir. Well, yeah. sir. I would, I would. Yeah, 100% Peter. Yeah, he's a great... Um, great voice actor and i mean and optimus prime is one of the most distinguishable voices in hollywood for sure so he definitely yeah. deserves that um didn't, for, didn't we find out when we were filming with eric that optimus prime uh, was one of the voices in invincible i think so yeah i think i think it might come up i think he mentioned it uh yeah uh but yeah dude yeah peter peter cullen is great um but as far as the richard simmons and christopher walking we can't do that but that would be really funny if bk and mcdonald's employed those two guys to actually duel it out <laughs> That would be funny. Uh, Richard Simmons, actually, I think he's like semi-retired or retired completely from public life, which I feel, you know, good for him. I feel bad for that guy, dude. Richard Simmons, like, seems like an honest, genuine, sweet guy. Seems like a good dude. Like a really, really nice guy. And one of the worst I've ever felt for him in my life. And I I, I don't give a shit usually about this kind of stuff. But I was like, man, if I was out, like, shut the fuck up, you goddamn greasy-haired motherfucker. Was When Howard Stern made him cry on air by questioning his sexuality over and over again because he wanted oh, yeah. to say that you're gay and you like to suck on pole and he was like like richard simmons was like i'm just trying to hear like motivate people and like make them like feel happy and this fucking cocksucker was sitting there going like but do you like fucking pole i was like obviously you have a fascination with it because you keep asking about it like i don't know if you and your wife play games in the bedroom and she like fucks you in the ass and you like that shit because why are you so interested in what he sucks on like i don't know like i felt <laughs> hey, bad no problem he, if you guys like that by the way we yeah. we support that too so what, yeah, I'm just talking about like Richard Simmons didn't want to talk kidding. about his sexuality. Like, and you, and, he, yeah. and he's also a sensitive guy, and you made him fucking cry. I, I didn't like that shit at all. Like, that was yeah, one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. That's disgusting, man. And I'll tell you how nice Richard Simmons is, dude. Like, he's also like a completely retired, right? The the celebrity bus that drives by in Hollywood Hills or whatever, and you know, they they took you know, take you around the star's house. They stopped in front of Richard Simmons' house, he comes out and greets everybody and takes pictures with them. Like he was mm -hmm. taking his trash. I was like, oh, hi. And he runs out there and like starts talking. I was like, yeah. that's a good fucking guy right there. 
Krista, to, to, and to answer your question, I, Christopher Walken's, a, 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 I've never been able to do it. I was literally trying to do it today. I was like talking to somebody and I was telling about The Prophecy 2, which is a fucking banger of a movie, better than the original Prophecy. I said what I said. I can't do Christopher Walken. I've never been able to. And Richard Simmons, I think I would just upset people if I try to do that. So. Uh, yeah, well, either <laughs> we wish we could. Of, both of them are really hard to do. Um, Christopher Walken, my brother Cody can do can a good do one. Cody can do a really good Christopher Walken. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, but you'll fuck uh, now. See, I can't even. Prophecy yeah. is better. So anyway. Yeah. Hey, but thanks, Michael. Appreciate you, man. Michael Parton. That was Michael says DCEU ends on Friday, 2013 to 2023. Hmm. So says the trades but we'll see about that also galactus might be the villain fantastic four uh in the fantastic four also i don't like the idea of having silver surf will be a female they're saying that, that? i didn't know that. that that's I'm gonna look, it. like it doesn't make any sense because the herald of galactus there already is a female herald after after a norn rad which is silver surfer by the way his real name is norn Rad, a male after uh galactus releases him from his contract he picks up another herald and she's um Oh my god, dude! Get the it's fuck just, out of here with that. To be bullshit. fair, it's just a it's just a rumor from comicbookmovie.com, and there's already been rumblings about uh, Fantastic Four reboot .com. featuring a female Herald for Galactus, but it's now said that we're getting a female Silver Surfer. Oh uh, rumor. I, I don't know what, at what point you know the the train fucking is going to stop with this bullshit. They know it's not going to turn out well. Here's the idea. The idea is. Jack Kirby made a character and he happened to have a dong and he happened to be silver and he happened to fly through space on a surfboard. And that I was way see back in the fucking sixties. So you want to see fucking it. arrogant, egotistical pieces of shit, virtue signaling Twitter, fucking goddamn addicted pieces of crap holes. Want to go on. It's like, I'm going to gender flip it. You're a fucking idiot. It works because it works. And that's why it's a popular character because of Jack Kirby, not you leave it the same. By the way, again, there was a female Herald. It comes later on in the story. You don't need to turn to the last page of the book just to get what you want. Read a little bit, get to the juicy parts, and then a new Herald is introduced, a female Herald. And that's Norn Rad is a fucking male white guy from the planet Zaxabar. I don't fucking remember, but he's a, and he's, and he sacrificed from his life. Zanzibar. Yeah. Well, he sacrificed his freedom. To prevent Galactus from sucking dry his planet, and that's how he became the Silver Surfer. This is why I'm saying this is stupid. You already have the momentum if you if you make Galactus the main villain and you introduce Silver Surfer. Don't fuck it up with more virtue signaling. Don't be an idiot. Just fucking make it. Be faithful to the subject material. You fucking idiots. I don't understand. Just want I just want to throw a vote in there for for uh, Devil's Advocate. That what if she's really hot? Like a really Dude, hot silver make surfer, her fucking kinda, hot as fuck, and right then it's now. fine. I don't give a shit. No, I'm <laughs> but no, I'm like I, I, I just I get tired of this stuff, dude. Like I, I really am. Like so, like it, it's it literally is a slap in the face of, of people. Anyway, I, I don't know. I don't I understand how people think it's like a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's literally an insult to people or minorities. It's like you guys are so pitiful. You're so pathetic and nobody knows how to take care of you, but us. So we're going to do you a favor because you're so stupid that you don't know how to create your own. That's it's so fucking obviously that it, it's a racist or it's a fucking misogynistic thing, that you don't think that they can just create a new character. And again, in the comic books, Galactus already has a Herald that's female. Stop being fucking woke and virtue signaling every goddamn time. People are tired of it. And by I the think way, it could also just be a bullshit rumor because they know it's going to upset no, people. No, I, I also clicks, I don't think that so. Bob Iger is going to do it anyway because Bob Iger already knows this messaging shit has already goddamn titanic Disney. Yeah. So they're yeah. done with it. Yeah, I think I think it's just maybe one of those things. Like if I say this, I know people will go crazy, kind of thing. James yeah, Bodiker, and they're right. Bodiker. God, I'm going to get that guy a flashlight. <laughs> says also, Jay, do you have a most anticipated game of 2024? Mine's Fantastic Four Seven: The Rebirth. Fan Fantasy Fight Fight Force Fight Nine Fight Fist Fist Frank Nine Final Fist Fantasy Frank seven. seven. Oh, thank you. Uh, unless Wolverine is releasing next year, then it'd be that. Well, I don't think Wolverine's going to come out until like twenty twenty six, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that's a, I mean, it looks great. Maybe twenty twenty five. Um, that's a good one. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth that comes out in February. I don't um I don't really have a most anticipated game, uh, that I can think of for next year. I would I would I, BBC I would probably, Seven. Yep, that's it. Uh, BBC Seven, uh, Big Black Cox. I mean, that's going to be a great one. Probably an all-time so, classic. It might win awards. We don't know yet. It's still early for the ballot. I will so, say, though, that Final Fantasy You'll VII come in Rebirth, 30 seconds though, playing this um, game. 
I might piggyback off what you just said and use that. Like, uh, I think that's going to be really fun and really cool. I'm really excited to see where they go with that. But uh, damn, dude, like that's put me on the spot. I don't know. I thought there was a re. Uh, it's not going to be Grand Theft Auto. I know that everybody's going to say Grand Theft Auto Six. Mine but... is definitely Madden Twenty Five. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm just going to piggyback off yours. Uh, it's going to be Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth for now. There's nothing really I can think of that's coming out that I'm like wholeheartedly looking forward to, except maybe that one. That's a good one. You do love those Final Final Fantasies. I you do. Fucking love them, you slut. You do. James Jackson says I've always loved Porky's. Porky's By the good. way, James, Wednesday the plan is unless some gargantuan news comes out that dominates the stream, the plan is uh, is to do that is your that's that's his Patreon request review, and I figured it'd be a fun one to do during the live stream. Give me good one. on Wednesday. Uh, our fr- I've never seen Porky's before. Have you? Oh, that's good. Okay, so we'll review that on Wednesday for real live stream, unless like you know Ben Affleck's name Batman or something like that. Some crazy news comes out and changes the flow, James. That one's coming soon, my man. Uh, Mercurio eighty says, "Hey, Mike and Jay, my most anticipated movie next year is Beverly Hills Cop 4. The trailer was fucking. Oh, good. I didn't even know they were doing another one. Yeah, dude, they is are. Eddie Murphy it, back. Yeah, the trailer came out the other day, and I'll say this about the trailer: uh, they brought back fucking everybody, dude. They brought back Taggart. They brought back Sven. Uh, 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 they brought back fucking." everybody did they have the axel f uh music going in the trailer yes they mixed it with another like it was like do 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 do, 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 they got they got they got to throw in something but yeah but it was badass that i will say the dj was fucking spinning the only problem is uh as good as it looked it looked it looked really fucking good it did look the cgi and the and the the um the cinematography look kind of corny. See, I don't like bit. that. Why are you using CGI? It's Beverly Hills Cop. Use practical effects for your explosions and car chases. Right. And there's like a there's like a, a dump truck going into a building, and there's a helicopter scene, and sometimes, and just the overall like cinematography of it looks a little corny. But apart from that's the only bad thing I can say about it. I think it looks fucking great, dude. But isn't that weird for you guys? Like, do you guys remember back? Like, like those movies are like old obviously but like they look so good and they hold up so well today because they use the practical effects for the explosions yeah. and things like that that just that looks amazing it looks 20 times 100 times better than what you can do on cgi is cgi cheaper yes is it more lazy work yes but why would you i i, I just don't understand it dude. for an action movie especially from the 80s coming back you should you just just keep to your uh what you what you originally did with practical effects i think that would makes it better like if they did totally- a lethal weapon 5 you wouldn't want them to like just rely heavily on CGI, and that's yeah. all they did. I totally agree with you, man. And uh, on the on the flip side of that, I think that uh, have you heard that uh, the True Lies 4K? They're finally doing True Lies in 4K, uh, the Abyss and all this stuff. But apparently, the word on the streets is that James Cameron himself was like very involved with the transfer to the 4K because True Lies you can't even buy it like on fucking Blu-ray, like it's missing. Mm. You can't rent it. It's a fucking nightmare. But they're transferring to 4K, and allegedly, it looks like fucking dog to do. <clears throat> they made it look super CG looking, and James Cameron like overplayed his hand and like went in and just made everything look fake as fuck and look like an Avatar movie. And they lost the film grain, they lost everything, and it looks like fucking butt. This is just what the internet's saying. I haven't seen well, it myself. He gave you a lie that was true. He's gonna, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, also, I lied. Uh, what was it I was gonna say? Uh, fuck, I forgot. Never mind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I was gonna say, Mister. Gay. Yeah, I love Dick. Um, break yeah, the news. I, I yeah, breaking break news. It. The water is wet. Everyone knows. <laughs> uh, the juice. Oh God, OJ's back. He didn't murder, but if he did, this is how he would do it. Can we lobby for Austin Powers four? I'd love it, dude. Mike, I don't know what Mike Myers is doing. He's semi-retired, I think. I don't even. I, I mean, there's been rumors and speculations for a long time that he was going to do another Austin Powers, and either he can't get the funding for it, or he doesn't want to do it. I don't know. I don't think. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get one. To be fair, I, I think that Austin Powers is kind of like the ship has sailed a little bit. I'll um, say this, man. I, I, like. I think we'll get a Wayne's World 3 before we get a fucking Austin Tom's, Powers 4. Tom's got to be running out on that one. I want to see it, too. Well, that's why I, it's I, be I, funny, because the Wayne's World 3 would be more of a, a Bill and Ted 3, because you have yeah. Dana Carvey, and they're two. What if it's funny? is like they're two older dudes that are still doing the same shit like we were are going to be doing when we were 60, and they're just yeah. like hanging out in the basement making videos. That's what I was literally getting ready to say, dude. I think the way you go about Wayne's World 3 is you just make them like you don't try to change it. You don't try to make them no. look young. You just make them old dudes That's who are it. still best friends. And the community doesn't understand. Like you guys <laughs> still hang out up. like yeah. in your in your 50s, 60s or whatever. And yeah. you still go to bars all the time. And they're like, yeah, so 
and they're out in the street playing hockey. He's like, game on. He's like, oh, I can't. I fucked up my hip. I can't get up, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like that kind of shit would be hilarious. Like, don't try to dress it up. But as far as Austin Powers goes, if I if they hired me to run a studio and someone came to me with Austin Powers 4, I love you, the juice. I do. But I, I'm telling you right now, I'd be the first one to say, nah, we're rejecting that. Because honestly, for our generation, we love those movies and I could watch them and laugh. They just didn't age well. And it has nothing to do with like politics or like uh, uh, SJW, any, none of that stuff, people being offended. Those like movies just, hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're just not as Such funny to people today as they were to us then. It just did not transfer. It's just I haven't watched them. Um, I haven't watched Austin Powers in a minute. I do remember um, the third one. So I didn't like it. Even when it came out, I thought it was kind of shitty. Um, I just felt like it was a rushed kind of thing. And it just didn't feel, it didn't feel like the first two. But the spy who shagged me and the first awesome powers are I, I think they're good. I still like them. Um, I haven't watched them in a minute. The third one was bad. I just yeah, I don't feel like I, but the you know, to be fair, I think I don't think there's really a much interest in Mike Myers doing a, a fourth one. I don't think he really wants to. Like yeah. he's getting and he's, I, I still think they're funny. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, I I, 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 I love them, but I, I think that um I think Mike Myers is too busy counting his fucking cash. Like from the Shrek movies, like uh no, like you true. know, the guy and uh you know the people on the stairs that like counts his coins. In the basement. Yeah. <laughs> going back. He to, doesn't need go, to do it. Going back to Eddie Murphy, I read something the other day, and I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, maybe it's just because he does a lot of family. So he's doing that family Christmas film. Someone was saying something about like he doesn't. Uh, I saw something he doesn't want to do R-rated movies, which I, in Beverly Hills Cop, as of now is unrated. So there's no rating yet. That's so, gonna be dumb. Don't rate yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I could be wrong. I just read something, so I don't know. I'm just kind of scares me a little bit. You know what? I'm not wrong about. I got a P. Do it. Go put it in the toilet like a man. Well, I'll, I'll read this one real quick with you. Okay. Mike, liar, liar, or scream? Jay, Ace Ventura, or The Crow? You keep asking me that, you asshole. Like every fucking time, it's The Crow. You it keep saying be. things to me, and you know it's going to piss me off. I'm going to pick The Crow. I'm going to go scream. Can't you help put, it. I, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you what the movie that would beat The Crow for me, but The Crow is going to be Ace Ventura, even though I love Ace Ventura. But it's really hard to say that because they're, to they're two totally different genres. They're two yeah. totally different genres. It's Jesus tough. Christ, Ric Flair. Woo! That's why, see, that's what Ric Flair would do. Like, that's like the, like, if he was trying to mind game his opponent. Wheeling and dealing. He'd be like, wheeling and dealing. He'd be like, you need to pick. I can't, I was going to do a lispy <laughs> thing, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm going to, I am going to go see that Zach Efron movie in the theaters. Uh, The Iron Claw? Yeah. The Iron Cock? I yeah. heard it's fucking, dude, I heard it's, oh, it's a crier. It's a fucking dark No, I, movie. well, you, yeah, the heard. Von Eric story is like extremely sad, but I'm going to go see that movie because I did, I loved, I, I love the, the, the wrestling stuff from the old days. And then the Von Eric story is so fascinating. And I, I like those kind of movies, dude. Like those, those, uh, what are they called? They're not biopics. Uh, they're, um, biopics. Well, they're exaggerated. So they're not really exactly like what happened. Maybe right. But whatever, I like those kind of movies. So I love the Mickey Rourke, the wrestler, which to me is the best wrestling movie of all time. The best wrestling show of all mm -hmm. time is Heels. Heels. hundred percent. Yes, I agree on both counts, my friend. Yeah. On both counts. I got Maybe to go the best the wrestling Lizard. scene of all time was Rocky huh? Three when he fights Hulk Hogan in the ring. Best wrestling scene of all time in the movie. But the wrestler is the best wrestling. Dude, movie. I will. Man, you know what? Fuck it. They're not even gonna have a season three at this point. The ending of season two when when uh, when Jack. I think that's whoa the, whoa Jack, whoa whoa. We still want people to watch. We're they're never, the they're never gonna reboot the fucking thing. They're not gonna get. I mean, we don't have the money. No, nope, they're gonna... shopping it around. They're shopping it. They're shopping oh, okay, it, and well it's still then... available to watch. So, well, they, watch okay, well they, I'm not gonna say what happens, but in the in the ending of season two, that was one of the best choreographed. Uh, not it wasn't the best choreographed, but it was it was one of the most like holy fuck moments I've ever seen yeah. in, a, in a in a in a show depicting wrestling. Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, he has titanium legs. <laughs> New legs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see you in a bit. Um, yeah, uh, dude, I'm gonna go scream just because if you take away liar liar from me, all right, I'm gonna watch Dumb and Dumber. I'm gonna watch Eastern Shore. You take Scream away from me, I'm gonna watch. I know what you did last. No, don't fucking do that to me. Uh, that's exactly why I feel that way. Uh, ProtectSafes.com. Are you fucking doing an advertisement right now? I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up because I do need a safe uh, for all my kumquats suffocated kumquats i gotta find a place to put those um because everyone who has a suffocated kumquat knows that you can't just leave them laying around they shrivel up and die what is a suff suffocated kumquat at the end of the day emotionally if all the future superheroes are 100 pound chicks we want more hmm 
all the superhero future superheroes are 100 pound chicks we want more i don't know what you're saying i don't but they're superpowers so technically you could put those in like a baby super baby that's a movie i want to see i want to see a little baby fucking people up recast superman as a baby let's do that he also says if michael returns as a chick too michael myers as a girl hey <laughs> shut the fuck up don't put it in the ether they'll fucking do it <laughs> watch that shit it has a ponytail just Don Shanks on the outside. Don Shanks is a man's man. I'm not saying anything. He did cry, though. He's the only Michael I ever cry. Isaac Slayton. Thanks, buddy. Yo, guys, just got a PPL under the stairs. Do what? I just got a PPL under the stairs. Oh, I thought it was like a weird sex thing. I thought like you got a uh, a PP lick under your, under your stairs. Like maybe you had like a hidden trap door and the kids were sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> uh, a a bit poo -poo. I know that you know what, uh, uh, but you mean people under the stairs and they live on 4K from Best Buy before they give up on Blu rays. Also, have y'all heard about Wanel's The Wolfman? Uh, dude, people under the stairs on 4K is one I fucking need. I need to purchase that. I love that movie. I do not understand why they're redoing it. It's perfect the way it is. They live great, fucking awesome. Uh, pissed at Best Buy. That shit sucks. But as far as Winnell's Wolfman, yeah, disappointing news, honestly. Like, I'm excited that Lee Winnell's coming back to direct it, but they're replacing Ryan Gosling and Derek Diafrances, or whatever the fuck his name is, who directed The Place Beyond the Pines. So you're losing Ryan Gosling and Derek Diafrakataki, and they're replacing them with uh, Jason, At what Aaron, At what I can't remember the guy's name. Apparently, he's a really good actor. He's in The Little Things that's in theaters now. I just did a video about this today. Um, that'll be coming out soon. But yeah, it's anything Ryan Gosling's a step down, to be honest. Like, he's one of the most charismatic, fun actors. Uh, but Lee Winnell is the right fit because he did such a good job with Invisible Man. So I'm still pumped about that regardless. But yeah, man, a uh, little bummed. A little bummed. Happy for Lee Winnell, though. That's probably going to be good still. Eduardo Santiago! Mike J, are you guys going to review Zach's Rebel Moon? You bet your fucking tits I am. You spread your cheeks and bend over and ask me that question again. The answer's still going to be yes. But this time, I'm going to be inside of you. I, also, I think that uh, I asked, I did ask Netflix for uh, that screener. And they were like, <laughs> no. Uh, they didn't actually say that. They said that they're doing, weird, they're doing Rebel Moon screeners in theaters. Like Alanis Morissette. In a theater. Um, going down on the guy from Full House. So, and we live in Kentucky, so there's no screeners near us. So we couldn't get a screener. We can't review it early like we planned to. We'll definitely do a review of that when it comes out. Uh, as usual, maybe the critics are right and Rebel Moon sucks. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a huge Star Wars type movie guy myself. Jay is. Maybe they're right. But all I know about that is that the critics are always twice as mean and twice as fucking petty and little fucking cocksuckers when it comes to Zack Snyder. Not, not the reviews of his films, just the way they talk about him, the way they always throw in his little cult and his little Snyder base. Like... The guy didn't do anything wrong. By all accounts, he's a super nice dude in Hollywood. The guy went through a fucking hell of a rough time in his life, and he's just out there trying to do what he loves. There's no reason to fucking shit on him because you're piece of shit assholes who are just jumping on the newest fucking thing. Uh, so I hate that for him. I hope the movie kicks ass. I have no idea. And if it sucks, we'll say it sucks, but we won't be fucking cunts about it like half of Rotten Tomatoes. I, I, yeah, um, I, uh, my wife was happy to see me, which never happens, and I feel I realized uh, why. It's because the Eagles are winning. I was like, oh, they I are. See. They oh, are, I see. Uh, they're only up by a touchdown, though. I got I got the Seahawks plus three and a half in this one. I'm probably going to lose that money. Um, so that's I don't good. know, man, because it's only it's just the beginning of the second half, and there's a lot of time left. So yeah, second quarter. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of time. I'm, I'm well, yeah, Protectsafes.com said Aquaman two watered down. Ha <laughs> ha! See what you did there. Squirt, it's so squirt. fun. Squirties could be. I don't know. I, I like. I'm not like again. I'm not motivated enough to go see it in the theater. I'll wait for it to come out on the seas. I won't even pay yeah. Disney Plus for that shit. But um. Yeah, like to be fair, I I thought that Momoa was fine, at, like as far as the vision that Zack Snyder had for like Aquaman, like it fit the character, like what they were going for that surfer dude that didn't really give a shit, but he has to do, has to give a shit later on and take responsibility. But again, that Aquaman was the vision of Zack Snyder, and now Zack Snyder's no longer in control of it any longer. So we never really got. We'll see what the fruition yeah. at the end of it was going to be. I don't know. But, I love, um, you know what I love James Wan's horror movies when James Wan does blockbusters. So far, not impressed. That's just me. That's just me. Um, I am. I think you know. I, you know. I don't know. I, that might be a lot. If James Wan did an Alien movie, that could work though. 
I'm well, I got something. Well, yeah, I got something for that. Uh, I bet it could be good though. Uh, if he leaned on the horror vibes of it, uh, we are at 8 30 p.m., my friend. Okay, okay, okay. I got Zach Desroches. Okay, I'll All be right. right back. Okay, all right. Uh, Zach Desroches says, uh, Sup, dudes, it's been a while. It's been a while, but it's happy. To I'm happy to see you, Zach. Uh, God, that you Loomis. Uh, what are you getting, Michael, for Christmas? Uh, cyanide pills, uh, dressed up as gummy bears. Hopefully he doesn't notice and he eats them because he's a dumb shit and he will. And then if that doesn't kill him, I don't know, maybe another couple of six, six bullets. You know, that's what we do every goddamn Christmas. You know, I try to poison him. He doesn't die. And then, yeah, shoot him again. But yeah, that's what I'm getting him. That and uh, probably uh, when he goes to sleep, his bed full of cacti. You know, it's just the normal stuff. But thank you, Zach. Uh, JK. Uh, JK says, uh, did the list say Scream 2 better than OG? If so, I agree with that statement. Sorry, Mike. Uh, Jay Sing Nasty Girl by 50 Cent. <laughs> I don't, dude, I don't know that song. That sounds like hot, though. I will sing it for you if I knew, if I knew the words, if I knew the song. I probably do know the song. I just don't know the words. But I'll let Mike know about what you're saying there. You, th I don't, I don't know Scream 2 being better than the OG. Woo wee. Why are you getting high on your own supply, dog? But anyway, but some people do think that. Uh, Nora says, what's up, my dudes? Hope you and your families have a great Christmas. Thank you so much. Uh, yours as well. Any chance you guys think we get a Nightmare on Elm Street announcement next year for the 40th anniversary? Love you guys. Man, uh, who knows? I don't know. The rights for Nightmare on Elm Street are, I mean, it's with the Craven Estate, and they've been interviewing people that want to reboot the series. I would love that. I think it's time. I think it's well past time to have a new Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, but yeah, you know, that would make sense if they lined it up for the 40th anniversary and then it made a big announcement like that. It would be huge. It would be massively wild. But yeah, um, I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it um, on the old webs about uh, a new Nightmare on Elm Street. So I'm not sure, but it's possible. It's possible. I, I think it would be a, a perfect time to do it. Um, and God, that would be so cool. That would that would be so amazing if we had a Nightmare on Elm Street to look forward to, you know, in 2025 or whatever. That would be awesome. But who knows, man? I hope so. But thank you so much. I hope you have a great Christmas as well, buddy. Uh, Louis, Luis Ruddy says, yo, hope you both and your families are well, boys. We're doing good, doing, doing fine, doing well. Uh, thinking about getting the fleshlight thing. I don't know. A lot of decisions coming up, but we'll see. Thank you, Louis. Hope you're doing well. Jordan Decker says, I love how the live streams have become like Cold Stone. Throw in a buck or two, make the guys sing. Do Loomis and Chalice now. No, it's okay. no man, uh, like, we're just happy that anybody, that, that you got, you find folks show up, dude. I, I don't I mind that shit at all. Um, yeah, it's always been a, a real honor to be able to, like, uh, have you awesome people in the, in the, uh, in the comments and, and in the, in the live stream and, and the chat. So I don't give a fuck about any of that stuff, but um, it's all good, man. It's all good. We'll do it. We'll do it. And then we'll also talk about whatever. So it's fine. Um, Jack plays 95 says my favorite YouTube's love y'all looking forward to Beetlejuice two next year. The original is a classic, but probably won't live up to the original. Yes. Uh, again, I give too much spoilers. I, I am very, very interested in Beetlejuice 2 just because it's one of those roles that Michael Keaton himself has said and, and come out and, and talked about that that's one of his most beloved roles of all time. Like that he would immediately go back and do a Beetlejuice movie um, no matter what, as long as I think Tim Burton was a part of it. Um, so he has a lot of passion for that character. So I do want to see what he brings to the table. Um, so, yeah, it, it probably won't live up to the original. It's been I mean, how many years since the original Beetlejuice? Was it like fucking 38 years, 37 years, something like that? I don't remember when the, the first one came out, like late 80s, I think. But yeah, it's um, it probably won't live up to the first one. It, you know, a lot of these sequels never do, but I'm still excited. So when then? I don't know. What about that there? Uh, I hate hot. I hate hot. Or I hate how much politics and shit can't help but get in the way of the show sometimes. Yeah, that's the problem, man. Um, that's exactly where I am. I don't care, if, you know, if a movie is trying to make a statement about something or whatever, but just don't do it so ham-fistedly and make people feel like shit when they're just going to the theater to get away from life and enjoy the show. Like, I mean, listen, life is terrible as it is, everything that's going on. When you go to the movie theater or you watch, you pop a movie in to watch it with some popcorn in your hand, you're not worried about 
like you don't you don't think you're going to be having to be worried about like somebody like slapping you in the fucking face saying what a terrible person you are because you don't believe in this way like come on guys just make a fucking movie it's not that hard to do like leave it the shit out like leave the the other garbage that everybody's used to for cnn fox news twitter whatever the fuck is going on over there but yeah i get you man i get you uh taylor paulson says i was born in 90 and i vividly remember the freddie worm scene from nightmare on street 3 that had to do that had to do been in 94 and so and it was my first introduction to horror uh yeah uh nightmare on street 3 was um was that what was that was that i thought that was the 80s but i get what you're saying that uh you so you watched it in 94 is what i'm assuming maybe so you're four years old i was seven but <laughs> i was seven when i was when i watched Nightmare on street but yeah dude that was a great scene that was that was a that was a really that was a great scene because it was truly, it was actually a terrifying scene, but they did it so well with practical effects and it looked good. It looked great. Um, yeah, dude, hundred percent like that, that scene. I, yeah. That definitely sticks out in my mind as well. For sure. For sure. Good ones. Uh, Adrian Yabara says my list uh, for uh, 2024 is uh, bad boys. Four is number 10. Nine is Beetlejuice. Two. Number eight is twisters. Number seven is Saul. two. Number six is terrifier. Three. Number five is not Number four is kingdom of the planet of the apes. Uh, number three is gladiator. Two. Number two is Godzilla Kong new empire. And number one, alien Romulus. Fuck dude. I forgot about alien Romulus. Holy shit holes. Damn. And I'm like, I'm literally playing an aliens game. I'm playing dark descent. It's fucking hard, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm like I'm on level like I think I'm on mission seven and there's 12 missions. You, I only have 20 fucking days left before they nuke the planet. And I got to get my ass off. I got to get your ass to Mars. I got to get out of there. But it's like shit, dude. It's crazy. But yeah, it's good list. Good alien Romulus, man. Definitely going to be interested to see what they do after Covenant. But yeah, man, good. Good. Sonic three will have no Jim Carrey. So they didn't make the list. Adrian says, um, I didn't know that they, they wrote out. That makes no sense. I mean, wasn't he the best part of the first two? That's what I heard. That's fucking crazy. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, there was a question for you. Uh, I'm at 847, but there was a qu Let me go back up. Uh, no. Okay, so JK said it. Uh, he said, did the, the list say Scream 2 is better than the OG? If so, I agree with that statement. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, uh, I saw uh, through my travels uh, when I was going through this, I saw several lists that said that. I also saw several that said Evil Dead 2 was better than Evil Dead 1. Uh, I saw lots of lots of blaspheme. Evil Dead 2 is not that bad. I, I kind of get that, um, although I'd probably choose Evil Dead. But Evil yeah. Dead 2 is, I, I, yeah, Evil Dead 2 is pretty solid. Yeah, I you know I I don't disparage people who think Scream Two is better because it is a really good movie. I I think that's insane from my perspective. I think Scream is heads and tails a better movie. Uh, I mean, I'd probably give Scream Two a nine point five and Scream Scream a ten. But like, yeah, uh, hey, more power to you. I don't get it, but you do you, Jim. You do you. I am. Um, yeah, I, I've always thought like Scream was like superior in every way to every other Scream movie that came out. But it is what it is. It is mm -hmm. what it is. What time are you at? Eight forty. I, I told it was uh, eight forty-seven. Adrian, you better. Yeah. Uh, no wait. I think. Hold on. Uh, no, it was uh, eight forty-three. Yeah. No, it was eight forty-seven. I read the other one. Yeah, eight forty-seven. Okay. Uh, Adrian says rewatched Waiting recently. Definitely a top ten comedy ever. I would. I. I that, I'd have it to might look. be. It might be. That's a fucking possibility, dude. Waiting is so underrated. It's so angry. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, there's no. <laughs> Go join the army. God damn. I, I don't know what I'd be when I go out. Uh, go join the army. God damn. Uh, yeah, dude. Like, it, it, it definitely, I remember that, it, like, it didn't get a lot of press, and I don't remember it had anybody really celebrating it when it came out. It was kind of like one of those fly under the radar movies. I think I just saw it, or like a happenstance. I saw it, um, either I watched it on HBO or I just rented it. I think I might have just rented it. I had Blockbuster Hollywood Video or something like that, and I, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, dude. Anybody, uh, anybody in general, I think would love that movie. If you've never seen it, you should watch Waiting with Ryan Reynolds. But if you've worked in the food service industry as a waiter specifically, man, that movie is the office space of of food service industry workers. It's a fucking classic, man. I could watch that. Anytime. I feel like I feel like they tried to do they tried to emulate it as much as they could. It just didn't live up with uh, Employee of the Month with Dane Cook. Yeah, and it didn't. And I did it, like that. It was a good movie, but it was like it had way too much focus on the romance aspect of it, and some of it was just forced comedy. It just didn't work. 
But the waiting yeah. thing, I think the reason why that works so well is because Ryan Reynolds and Justin Long played off each other really well. I and mean, then you had like the background actors that were all fucking awesome. Oh yeah. my God, the bat, you bastard. <laughs> the Batwing bitch. BA, thanks, buddy. Says, don't want to rain on parade, but Taggart and Rosewood are in one scene and trailer doesn't show scenes involving Axel's daughter. Someone saw a test screening. Um, oh, Beverly oh. Hills. If that's true, that sucks. I, I would hope that they're in more than that because Taggart and Rosewood are such big parts of it. You know what I mean? Uh, I hope that's not true. I hope they're in more than that. But they did look good in the trailer. I did you like seeing it. Sure. I remember the first Beverly Hills cop movie I watched was the third one. Really? That was, no, Did you that like was, it? No, yeah, I, lo- I thought it was good. I was a kid, but I, it was on TV or something, and uh, I watched it. was on HBO. Like, when there was one HBO, and there was in, like, a fucking thousand of them. <laughs> HBO. It, it was just HBO. It was the only one. And I remember watching and liking it, and then I watched – it wasn't until, like, a lot later on that I went, went back and watched the first one. And then I was, like, a snob about it. I was like, it's so old. Because <laughs> they <laughs> had more that. updated uh, look to it in the third one. There's Dude, there's a ton of hate for Beverly Hills Cop 3, and there I is. like it. I do. Like I, I don't think, remember hating it. Yeah, I think the setting of him being in the theme park was pretty good and him like dangling off of like the roller coasters and shit was good. Yeah. I like all three Beverly Hills Cop movies, man. I really do. I do think it's less good than the first two, but BAC Oh, I just read that. Suri. JT Grogan. Mike, what product do you use in your hair? Um <laughs> Come. Uh, I yeah, it's it's definitely Jay's come. Jay saves it for me in come. a bottle. And every time he comes over, I'm like, did you bring it? He's like, yes, dude, God. And that's that's what I use. It's got to be Jay's, though, because this is extra firm. Um, No, it's a... I've used several over the years, but I got to have really, really... Well, until recently, until I started the hair thinning process of being an old fuck, I used to have to use, like, goddamn concrete because my hair used to be so thick. You used to have to be glue? Yeah, not that. That was no. It could. I couldn't even. It couldn't even be store bought, dude. I had to order that shit from like or get it from like the stylist. It had to be like fucking thick, um, because it used to be fucking way out here. I know that's that some forty one fucking hair, but uh, no. Today, I just it's it's Viking. It's something Viking on. You can get it on Amazon. It's cheap. It's like fourteen or fifteen bucks, and it's like the the firm hold of like the Viking paste shit. And uh, just yeah, Mike's hair. There. I'm assuming like when you Mike tries to style his hair, it's like running your thing, fingers through Velcro. It's like yeah. it's just too thick. Hey, look at it. It's smoother nowadays that it's so thin. It's pretty smooth. It's not not so sticky. While running um, my my fingers through my hair is like running it through running water. It just goes <laughs> <right through>. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that today, dude. I was sitting there watching TV and I was like doing this. I was like, you know, unconsciously touching my head. I was like, and I'm like my hand did this, and then it started going. <laughs> Where is like, it? No, no, I, no, I was like, oh shit. I was Where's like, I can gone? feel the fucking top part of my scalp on this side. Because <laughs> the receding hairline is getting so bad. I was like, my shit's going LeBron straight up. I need to get that fucking shit you spray on just for a little while. <laughs> I don't know if that works for white people. I think that's just a... No, that's you know, just I, a... You know, I have to get like the, the maple syrup version or whatever. Because my hair is brown <laughs> where I'm blonde. Oh, fuck. Michael Parton says LeBron's had some work done, by the way. He's had some surgery, I think. Um, I think Charles Michael... Barkley made fun. It's like, what? They showed a picture of him when he was running on court. And they're like, they, they digitally <sighs> altered his hair and it was like bald. He's like, look how good you look, though. Look how good you would look. <laughs> just go ahead and accept it. Everybody everybody knows that you're bald. Like, just go ahead and bald yourself. Listen, I probably, like, I got to go get a haircut soon. I might just wind up fucking buzzing it. I don't know. At this point, I'm getting fucking tired of it anyway. Like, you can only, I... like, you can only Donald Trump it for so long where you're trying to, like, comb it this way his and push is a whole it this different way. bag man well no well his is all like his scalp got fucked up. i don't know what his deal is but you can only donald trump it or like you know fuck around with it and, and like you know harry houdini your hair to make it look like you still got hair on top before it just all crumbles <laughs> under the illusion like it, like listen my hair is my hair is going away so fast like david copperfield couldn't make it appear like he, i know he made the statue of liberty disappear this motherfucker couldn't make my hair look like anyway i gotta i'm probably just gonna buzz it off uh, I'm going. I'm going mine out longer on the top, and actually, it's getting better. Like it's getting. I'm getting a little less baldy up top. I don't know if I if I just found the the chromosome to grow my hair back or what, or if I'm just it's just longer. But so far, I'm okay. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Um, Mike Barton, thanks, buddy. Says I'm gonna make and star in my own crazy zany or my own zany comedy called Gays Forever. Maybe you guys can <laughs> make cameos good. or be co stars. No. It could be the ultimate wham movie. Let's do that. I'm, I, I'm down for it. Fine. I mean, whatever. You know, look. If there's a steady paycheck, pervert. I'll suck whatever you want. Uh, no, like <laughs> twenty dollars, like, twenty dollars. Days forever is like it reminds me of the, the of the uh, Zach attack from Saved by the Bell. Friends forever. That should be your opening. But like days for like you know what I mean. Like you yeah, have the, Mark Paul Gosler do your opening. It's actually and just change a, a, it from a, uh, Friends Forever to Gays Forever. 
Yeah, it's a soul sister to the buttercream gang. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Nico, thanks, buddy. Appreciate that, man. I don't think we've ever seen you hey, here before. Nico, it, so thank welcome, you, man. dude. He's got the Pierce Brosnan, uh, fucking smooth as shit. Make a poll in the make a poll in the chat, Mike. Pierce Bronson, what? the only legitimate James Bond, or not? No, come on. Come uh, on, That's I not, he, Sean Connery. You're gonna you're gonna call I, Sean Connery. For me, in my opinion, James Bond is Pierce Bronson. In my opinion, maybe it's because we grew up with Goldeneye, and that's why. But it's the fact is, I think that Pierce Bronson is the best James Bond that I've ever seen, and that's he, the facts. Pierce Bronson is my favorite James Bond. Number two for me would be Daniel Craig. Number three, okay, Sean fine. Connery. I have the poll like this: Pierce Bronson versus Daniel Craig. And and I'll throw in Sean Connery too. Yeah. All three, all three in the polls. Yeah, polls. Obviously, Sean Connery is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, and Daniel Craig is amazing as well. He's like the fucking gritty action superstar that Bond really never wasn't, uh, except for Timothy Dalton. But what we grew up, Pierce Bronson was James Bond. Don't you dare say to me, Roger fucking Moore. You get that shit out of my fucking house. Dude, it's all right, I'll kick my you dad, out of Christmas my dad, dinner. Uh, my dad loved Roger Moore, dude. I don't get it. But he was no, it. he was born in he was born in 1960, so he grew up. Like he was ten years old or eleven years old when Roger Moore was doing James Bond in the seventies. That makes sense, yeah. But I see, I see. Oh, Timothy Dalton was good too. Um, uh, George Lazenby wasn't even that bad. But as far as the last poll we put up, uh, do you have superhero movie fatigue? Seventy-two percent of the audience says yes, I do. Twenty-eight percent says no. Um, not surprised. If I did that poll three years ago, I guarantee the results would be flipped. But I think people are really just and I, I, I'm, I am fucking basically nostradamus i said i've been saying this shit for years like it's people it's getting fucking hectic out here um it's getting it's getting it's getting kind of hectic. Kind of hectic it's getting it's getting it's getting um best james bond in the well, I, like i said i don't i like i'm i'm borderline on the superhero fatigue like i'm 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 superhero fatigued of the formula that marvel has used and that dc is copying and trying to use i just want smarter superhero movies i don't know why you can't do that i don't i don't get it like i don't even know why you can't make a good punisher like don't get me wrong the netflix thing with burton burton john burnthal was great yeah. but i'm saying like why can't why was it so hard for them to do that on a movie like right. why is uh, it so hard for them to make a great ghost rider movie like why is it so hard to do any of this i, don't I agree it. with you man it's because they it's because it's because the studio gets involved and they go wait this is a superhero movie so we can get the kids and the families in too and that's all they focus on and they yeah. fuck it up marvel is is the main problem with that uh nico also says and thank you nico he says so many good ones in 2024 my most anticipated are maxine dune part two mm -hmm. beetlejuice 2 magazine dreams if it gets released because that does star um margot robbie oh I wish. Mini uh, it does star jonathan majors in it oh but that was getting super hype before all this happened opus mm -hmm. i don't know what opus is gladiator 2 a different man civil war night swim and nosferatu well I, nice I, I can say simply say i've only heard of three of those uh some some are in my list i won't say which yeah man uh like i like i said i was actually pleasantly surprised. i actually almost texted mike uh yesterday i'm like i don't i can't there's no way for 2024 that I can come up with 10. It's going to be like five because I didn't think there was that many. And then when I started looking into them, I was like, Oh, there actually is quite a bit. There's quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah there, there's, it's, it's not going to be a bad year. I, I don't know if it's going to, but the, the wider strikes are really going to hurt it. I think. Uh, thanks Nico. Isaac Slayton says, what's some of y'all's favorite Christmas movies? I thought you were going to say Christian movies. And I was going to be like, ah, DC talk left uh, behind uh, with the guy, <laughs> the guy from uh, the growing pains. He was so good. <laughs> the buttercream gang. Also, if you could pick a video game, um, fit what's some of y'all's favorite Christmas movies? And also, if you could pick a video game property to get adapted to big screen, what would it be? Ooh, good question. Uh, uh video favorite... game Dead Space. I'm gonna beat you to it. Dead Space is my Dead pick. Space has already been adapted. Not to a movie, to yeah, a movie, has. to a fucking not a not yeah. a fucking animated no, thing. Like a no, movie. It's a, it, there's a movie. It came out two Where? years ago. It's Japanese. What? You're lying. You're no, it's lying called it's butthole. called Dead Space. So <laughs> no i'm kidding uh, you, know, you know that's a good one though uh dead space definitely should be <laughs> dead space should definitely have a uh an adaption you know what i i'm gonna say it and people are gonna get mad about it and i don't give a fuck but dude i would like a, a legitimate attempt to adapt a resident evil movie based on the fucking property that I'm makes sense that. that's not the bullshit they keep on doing. Like I'm talking about, I want the mansion. I want the traps. I want stars. I want Albert Wesker with his nice, sexy hair. I want Barry to go in. It goes, you almost became a Jill sandwich. All that fucking cringy. <laughs> I want all of that. And 
that's what I want. Okay, if creepy you're haunted me, house movie, right? Like, yeah, like the, the fact that you like, dude, the opening of Resident Evil in 1998, that when it came out in 97 on PlayStation, when the helicopter lands into the forest, they have that really cringy, like cheesy opening where they're like, oh, and the, the dogs are ch chasing them and they live action shot that. I want that yeah. on a big budget. And then they get into the house and then they have to solve puzzles and shit. And then they explore and they find out the corruption. Everything about the on. puzzles. I'm with you on everything. I hate the puzzles. Well, not like all of that. The whole movie is puzzles. But like, you know, like I want all of that. I want I want the Spencer estate really done right. I want the stars team members really done right. That's what that's the movie. That's yeah. I, the, the, the Ramiro treatment, I would have been fine with it. Yes, he took liberties and it was kind of fucking weird, but at least it was a lot closer to the, the subject material than all the other bullshit that came after. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see that as well. I'd also I'll also throw out uh, I would love a correctly done Max Payne film. By the way, the voice actor of the of Max Payne um, passed away today, I believe. Oh, I heard the, that, the voice yeah. actor, the main guy. Uh, so rest in peace to him. Uh, but Max Payne, I always thought would be an amazing fucking movie. And God, did they fuck that up with Mark Wahlberg? Um, it was awful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Final I, Fight would be a God. I would just Final Fight my would be jeans really if they made a Final Fight movie. Uh, um, and then it'll never, no, I don't even give a shit. I was going to say street fighter. I don't even give a shit about street fighter at all. I yeah. I'm, I'm much more concerned. Like I want a good mortal Kombat movie to come out, not a street fighter movie. But if I had to pick one more, like if it was a horror game other than resident evil, um, there was a game that I played back a long time ago called condemned. And I think that was a, uh, like a really cool story and, and the way that they handled that. I think that would be a really fun movie. There's a dude like, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm calling it. Mike's saying he's Nostradamus. Okay, then I'm going to be Baba Yaga. I'm going to be the Bobby. What's that lady's <laughs> name that was blind that could like tell the future? I'm going to be that uh, Baba Vega yeah, from the no, internet. No, 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 not her. Or she was literally an old lady that was blind. And she, uh, Baba Vega, I think is her name. I'm going to say that the next genre that's going to be literally squeezed to oblivion is going to be the video game adaptations. Because once they make one adaptation that does really fucking well, that's a good point. All the studios are going to start jumping on every video yeah. game they can get their hands on and and, do, and squeeze and get dry. And by the way, I don't know why I didn't think of it. This is what it was. Halo. Give me a Peter Jackson epic, oh, like a fucking three movies, three hours a piece Halo movie that makes fucking sense. Not mm -hmm. that bullshit we got on Paramount. Give me Halo. A real goddamn true Season two life. is coming out soon, by the way. It sucked, dude. Halo like the, what I told you, I said the first the opening was awesome. They yeah. went downhill so fuck. First off, you see his fucking face, which they already like take away the 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 uh, the mysticism of of, of one one seven, and yeah. like I don't know, dude. Yeah, give me a, a Peter Jackson produced Halo three film series. If they had been if they had been smart back in the day, and if they had done it earlier, it would have been the Star Wars of our generation. I guarantee, like I guarantee you that. I'm into that. I, I also would say uh, Duke Nukem would be a badass if they did it right. You can, I don't think in today's world uh, they it can would, really make it work. In today's but climate, there's no fucking way. In the way. 90s, a Duke Nukem Oh, in the 90s. No, but like, rolled, like today, there's no way they could get away with John it. John Carpenter's Duke Nukem. Fuck me in the I, ass. I was like, yeah, and you know what? And Kat, If it was in the 90s, Kat, cast uh, Kurt Russell as Duke Nukem. Yeah, I'm yeah. in. Mean, I'm fucking in, dude. Uh, that's a great question, man. Favorite, uh, favorite Christmas, Christmas movies? Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say uh jingle all the way i fucking love i'm not a big christmas movie guy um uh silent night deadly night two uh way better than the first one because it includes the first one uh i do love that one uh just friends i love that one and uh i like spirited with ryan reynolds and uh, will ferrell those are the three i'll go with off the cuff i'm gonna go with uh home alone two uh jack frost with michael keaton i always cry at that fucking movie you know die hard of course diehards yeah that, that's up there but jack frost always like gets me like you know uh the kid's dad coming back for one last time and he's dread like I, don't know, I love that movie and then um home alone 2 jack frost krampus i actually like krampus quite a bit like i, I don't know what it is i do like it, it it's got a, it's got a really good blend of like horror elements in it with comedy and it's the christmas holidays i kind of enjoy that and then uh uh yeah I get. I, I know this is so standard, but the Santa Claus, the first one with Tim Allen, I do I'll like go, that one. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought he's like, how come Santa doesn't want any of my milk? He goes because Santa is lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, now, do you want these presents or not? Now go back. 
<laughs> there's some good Christmas movies, man. That's for sure. I think it's a it's an overdone market, but there's some great ones. Zach Desrochez, thank you, buddy. Says, gotta go, boys. Got peak season going on at work. Oh, Bezos is cracking the whip, and I'm all broken up here, bitch. I can't work anymore. Uh, hey, thanks for stopping by, bro. Hey, thanks, Zach, man. We Glad to see you. I uh, one of the biggest fights I ever had with my parents came from uh, Jeff Bezos and Amazon. I, when I was like 17, I wasn't going in a great direction and I got a job at Amazon and uh, I, I drank some of that. I just smoked weed. So I had to drink a flush. But this was like in the early days of flush. Mm-hmm. And they had a drug test for it. And I, ch- I bought this stuff for like $40 in like a questionable fucking flea market. Chugged it. Walked in the dude's office, peed in the cup, and then you just bring it right out to his desk. It's not a professional thing at all. And he sticks a dipstick in it. I walk into the bathroom next to his office. I pee. I pee neon fucking green. Neon, like a Seattle Seahawks jersey green. (laughs) Set it on his desk. He he doesn't bat a fucking eye. I think, oh, this is going to be so embarrassing. He dips the dipstick in it, and he goes, you passed. And I went, what? (laughs) Like to his face. I went, huh? And he was like what i was like yeah but anyway i worked there for like two weeks and i was like this job is hard and i just want to go smoke with my friends and i quit and like there were stock options there was all this shit they give you as a picker and amazon in the early days and my parents were so fucking pissed at me so hey good on you man good on you for keeping it up i just thought you were like a big gatorade fan and that's why (laughs) i was like but you know also i i remember I, i got i went to orientation at the amazon call center uh, and I like I went to orientation because I, I was gonna get paid for like just doing that. And then we were walking, dude. It was so stupid. They were like taking us. Like I hate. It was another call center, which I already worked at a call center. I fucking hated call centers. So I went there and expecting it to be different. It's not. But I always when we in orientation, like all right, everybody stand up and say a little something about yourself. And I'm like, this is fucking. I was like, my name is Jay. Uh, I'm as happy as a schoolgirl to be here. Uh, I can't believe it. Uh, and I'm from Winchester. And I'm I'm, gay. A, I'm a Pisces, and sometimes I like to suck <laughs> dick in a closet. And, and, then, and then they were like, "Oh, it's good, to, okay, good." And then they were clapping, like it was like a goddamn AA meeting. You know, like, oh, yeah, thank you, Jay. Yeah, thank awful. you. Awful. And they're like, awful. "Are, are you, do you go by Jay, or is, do you have another name?" And I was like, uh, "They call me Johnny Ringo, but I go by Jay." <laughs> but then I was we were walking around. Do they have in the Amazon call center? They have a game room where they have all the latest PlayStation. Or the, the the consoles, and they have like uh, air hockey, and then they have couches, and then they have a, a relaxation room where it's like really dark, and they have really nice music going, like uh, sail Sounds away, sail away. Like when you have really bad calls, you get to go in there and like just lay down. I'm like, you fucking pussies! I was like, you guys would never survive in the fucking hellhole that I came from, where I had to sell Obamacare to people on the fucking phone. You how, have long no did, idea. How, how long? How long did you stay at this? This this I said uh, I went to orientation. I never went back. <laughs> <laughs> I we did uh we did I did two hours because I couldn't get out, and then when they were like, "All right, we're gonna break the lunch and come back," and I got in my car and I left. <laughs> but I got paid for two hours. Hey, that, that two hours you had to you had to do the W two and everything for it too, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I was like, you better not keep any of that shit because it's gonna be like sixty bucks. <laughs> DJ Graham says, Jay, do you agree with me that the bad guy from Robocop Rogue City looks exactly like Hans Gruber? Yes, and I think 100% they – they uh, do. Uh, well, he just – well, he didn't spoil I'm actually going to get you that for Christmas. I, 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 I know. Get, no. I, I, don't, I already gifted it to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. But anyway, um, yes, I think 100% that the, the main guy uh, in Robocop Rogue City is like at least 100% inspired by Hans Gruber. The only thing the, – the complaint about the main bad guy in, in Rogue City is like – they like did his fucking voice lines in a shoebox because he like, well you're gonna go somewhere and then you should go away. like it was like why like it's like you can't hear it and like he's trying to be intimidating but he's like whispering ASMR to you like it's That's like weird. It's, no because I like I'm I know excited what, I'm excited I'm ex- thank you I'm yeah, excited about that welcome. I'm gonna I've been wanting to play it with my dinghy out I got I got um, I'm gonna get uh, yeah Robo RoboCop Rogue City gifted to you on Xbox Live and then I'm gonna get you a bottle of vodka so you can drink it while you play it's the greatest uh, gift of all time. That's that sounds like uh, that sounds like a great fucking weekend, buddy. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm not gonna tell you what I got you because it's in my. I don't want me. it. You have to suck it to get the present. Is it Aquaman two poster? That's how it works. <laughs> is it an Aquaman? Actually... It's an Aquaman two movie. I'm just like, taking you to see Aquaman the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's it i just you i just got you one ticket to aquaman too drug and inspired says garth brooks has my family he does now i heard that i heard now that garth's a little wild when he gets drunk on natural light now he could have just borrowed your family for a little while but he'll drop them out <laughs> soon 
Calm down. Because I'm shameless. I'm doom, doom. When is it Brooke comes to love Is he still married to Faith Hill? Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, their country, they don't get divorced. You know how that goes. Ooh. Faith Hill. I, well, I, I didn't want to get divorced either, but my slut had a different <laughs> opinion. My ex Colt Candler. Good man, that Colt Candler is. Says, sup, dudes. By the way, I got a package from the P.O. box from Colton. It looks fucking special. We're going to do an unbox for that. Can't wait for it. He said, sup, dudes. What would you want to see in the next Spider-Man movie? I want Spidey and Daredevil to team up and take down the Kingpin. That's That'd be a good one. Uh, well, it's weird, movie. though, Colton, because... Uh, oh, I mean, would you rather have Spidey and, and Daredevil, which I guess that does make sense as far as a team up go, because or also would you want Spider-Man, uh, Daredevil and then introduce the Punisher because the Punisher's big rival is also Kingpin. And then you'd have that moment where Spider-Man, since he's played by, uh, the, you know, what's his name? Um, what's the actor's name? The, the new one. Tom. Uh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Burger. Young kid getting exposed to this like grizzled war veterans. Like you don't, you, you, you can't keep giving these motherfuckers chances. I keep putting, you know what I mean? I, like that, that would be a good dichotomy between like, it would be Tom Holland being introduced to something that's more than just like, he's only been around the Avengers and shit. Like Tim McGraw oh, is married to the, Faith the, Hill, by the way, Tim huh? McGraw is married to Faith Hill and Garth is married to Trisha Yearwood. Thank you, Holly. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would, uh, I would, me, Holly. I would love to see the Kingpin. Um, and I, and I definitely think they should get, um, what's his name, uh, from the, how the fuck am I not Vincent Diafrano? Is that his name? Uh, that played him in the, in the TV show. Kingpin. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they definitely should get him back. Right. Charlie Cox should come back as daredevil without a doubt. And then they might as well with John Bernthal, but I would love to see the dichotomy between having a young impressionable Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Right. And like, going up against the the um, the moral compass of the punisher and be like <clears throat> you got to keep putting these fuckers down and they keep getting out of jail so i put bullets in them and they won't get back up again and having that whole because i think I'd that would be a it. cool thing i would love it I, I, lo I would love daredevil like colton said i would love punisher i would love ghost rider in that bitch i would love all that let's do that shit let's do that fucking shit dude is it by the way i'm gonna i'm gonna be interested in the next spider-man movie is that gonna be a sony produced only movie or is the mcu gonna be involved in it that's gonna be interesting. i don't know I, the only thing i saw was tom holland was like i'm not coming back unless there's a good reason to but you know well he didn't like that they were divorcing well he didn't like the fact that they were gonna move off and away from the mcu yeah yeah and uh, I'm like, I, 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 like you know listen i like i think tom holland's a fine spider-man but to be fair he could be replaced if he doesn't want to do the job, there's a lot of people that would line up to be Spider-Man. I mean, I'm, just I'm with you on that. I, I am with you on that. Uh, by the way, Holly, uh, that the, the song I sang there, you should listen to the Blink-182 Untitled album. It's like it's sort of a thematic album in a way. And there's multiple songs that mention Holly in it. And they're great fucking songs. You should check it out. And Brandon Ferguson says, what's and by the way, guys, we're about to do in just a second. We're going to oh, start yeah, our I'm people to be bitching about that. Top 10 uh, most anticipated. Uh, you guys are so cool and you're doing such a great job of keeping the chat flowing and keeping the interest, the conversation interesting. Uh, I promise soon we are going to get to our top 10. Brandon Ferguson says, up, guys? American Pie is probably my favorite comedy. That's good. Cool. I mean, okay. you can't go wrong with American pie, warm apple pie. Uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it, it was the first movie that made people like guys be like, is it true? If I put my dick in a fucking apple pie, would it feel good? Everyone, uh, I, it would be, uh, yeah. Um, Some tried. Yeah. It's, it, it was also one of those first movies that guys or people saw and like, that's what happened to that kid from rookie of the year. I forgot he was alive uh, because that was the first time I'd seen him since rookie of the year that he just, popped up in american pie but yeah dude it's yeah. a great movie it's a great coming of age movie they capture the no also maybe the best soundtrack one of the best soundtracks ever produced yeah. for a 90s uh movie and maybe. blink 18 blink 182 is in that movie so you can't go wrong uh yeah holly it's the untitled album listen to that one that's the one you want to listen to agent Ibarra said seems kong and godzilla are teaming up against a new foe mm -hmm. glad it's not destroya as he's a final boss type clearly being saved for the final zilla film yeah a I watched it destroyer destroyer i don't know I, like you're you're probably way more versed on the villains of the godzilla movies i'm not sure who that is i thought mecha godzilla was like the super villain back in the day so i'm well off on my off the reservation on this one but i will say uh, the kong and godzilla teaming up i'm kind of like um kind of nervous about it i'm not saying it, it's not gonna be great i just kind of feel weird like these are animals right they're monsters they're like mega monsters mega pint monsters um and like obviously king kong has more intelligence than godzilla but i would like i would still i would still say that they would have territorial 
animal instincts that wouldn't allow them. I don't know. Um, I just don't want it to be like a happy family, go lucky, you know, Godzilla and King Kong high fiving as they, you know, shoot a layup at the local college park. Lord. And then they, they like, Hey, we got to go save the world. And they're like, Oh, you don't say it. And they go and take on this monster. I still want to see it. Don't get, I mean, dude, I, I, I love King Kong, Godzilla, the movies, all of it, but I don't know. I mean, if Destroya is the, as a final boss type, I don't know. By the I, way, and the reason why I'm walking on eggshell, me and Mike got fucking murdered one time in comments. We we did a King Kong, or that was a Godzilla. I don't know which one. It was one or the other. And we were talking about villains, and, and people were like so invested in the Godzilla movies. They're like, you pieces of fucking communist shit. You don't even know who Mothra is. You don't no. know who who uh, Kakako is. And you're like, I don't know what the. Yeah, you know, like, do not know the nuclear weapon that went up Godzilla's butt one time in a remake that never got aired because they Finger were afraid guns. of censors. But it went up his butt and he became a vampire. You don't even know. I'm like, no, I didn't know any of that. I'll say, I'll say this, man. I'll say, uh, to, just to be full frontal male nudity, honest with you, Adrian. As always, I, I was so fucking hyped off Godzilla minus one. I'm having a really hard time getting excited for Godzilla Kong. It was better than every fucking Godzilla movie we've gotten in America in the past 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. It was the best Godzilla movie I've ever seen, and I have no qualms with fucking sticking you. Uh, I have no qualms with saying that uh, Godzilla minus one is the best Godzilla movie I've ever seen, and I've, I've had a really people. hard time getting psyched up for for anything else right now. It was just I that have, fucking. I haven't I haven't seen it yet, but um, uh, Godzilla minus one. I I literally thought that was going to be a streaming uh, movie, but for some so reason funny. I thought I thought it was on Apple, like Apple streaming. That's what no, I thought. no, it's in theaters only. It's so fucking good. Um, Kyle, thanks, buddy. He says, "Hey, Mike J, so excited for the new Aliens movie." Thanks, I forgot all about that one. I know Deadpool three, The Fall Guy. I just watched the trailer for The Fall Guy tonight. That looks fucking awesome. It's like Ryan Reynolds, or uh, excuse me, Ryan Gosling stepped straight off of the Nice Guy set and onto a new movie set. Super pumped about that. Uh, Dune Part Two, Bob Marley's One Love, uh, Maxine, Fuck My Life, so many movies. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, uh, surprisingly, so there was a lot more movies than I anticipated when I actually started looking at a list and 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 compiling things that I was excited about. But yeah, um, Dune Part Two is going to be really. I got to go back. Like I stopped, and I, everything I saw up to the point. I think I, I watched Dune uh, for about. I think it was an hour in, hour and fifteen minutes, maybe. And I loved every fucking thing about it, but for whatever reason, I forgot it. The, you know what? I forgot about that I watched it, so I hadn't watched all of it yet. But from what I saw, it was so good and it was so true to the novel. I can't wait. And you're right, Dune Part Two is going to be epic as fuck. I don't know what the fuck is Maxine. What is that, uh, Maxine? Uh, we you know we did the the Patreon commentary this last month for X. Um, oh, is Pearl. that? Oh, I watched that sequel that you told me to watch. You watched Pearl? Yeah. Did you like it? I hated it. You hated it? It's fucking I awesome. No, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I just I thought it was like, it's kind of stupid. I didn't like it that much. Well, uh, uh, Maxine is the follow-up to X, where she leaves and she drives away, uh, where Mia Goth's character drives away at the end of that. She, she goes become, to LA. Oh, she goes to become a porn star? Uh, yeah, porn star. Like, uh, she goes to become famous. I don't know if they do the porn thing or not for sure, but she goes to become famous. And Maxine is the movie where they follow her to LA and dead bodies start to pile up around her. And then it becomes a uh, kind of a gallo slasher, is what they're saying. And the first be. one that meets her at the gates, uh, LEX, LAX is, <laughs> is, is goddamn none other than Chigger's beard himself, Rob Zombie. You should sew some boobies there. in your movies. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Speaking of anything happening, we're going to take a pause from the Super Chats for just a moment. Keep them coming, please. We really appreciate you guys. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. If you go back, and I'll, I'll I'll put this on Twitter or Instagram or something, you got to look, you guys. You got to see uh, on all of our live streams, the monetization section, it's red, yellow, green. Green means you're free <laughs> for monetization. You can make money off of yeah. this video. Uh, from ads yellow is uh basically Limited. it's not suitable for mm -hmm. advertisers so basically you're not making money money off of it because we're not showing it to fucking anybody because coke will get pissed off or uh amazon or whoever and then red is copyright material because you guys showed a trailer our fucking thing doesn't even look like a stoplight it looks like a stoplight in hell if i show you guys all of our live streams it is yellow 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 red yellow 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 red yellow 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 red none of these videos as far as like advertising does anything so you're all super chats in these not only are they great conversation and they're fun as fuck and we have a blast with them but they honestly uh they 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 make it um they make it really good for 
the channel to to do and they, they keep us doing these so we thank you guys so much for your super yeah. chats we're gonna pause them for just a second keep them coming we will answer every single one our, but for our, right now our monetization looks like uh like a drunk guy trying to explain to the cop i didn't run that red light <laughs> i didn't run what are you talking about it's, it was yellow it was yellow it's like no bro that's that was like that was red for like five minutes yeah what? so to be to be fair, you you people who super chat, and we appreciate it. You don't have to super chat. If you just show up and watch, we really appreciate that as well. But the people who super chat, you guys are the reason that these mm -hmm. live streams keep going. You you make it, you make this possible. So thank you guys, and please yeah, keep those sure. coming. Thank you, Ben. For the meantime, in the meantime, I'm loving wieners uh, as usual. But first, let's show. Let me pull this up here real quick. Badang, badang. And I'm going to share with you guys this screen all right so we've got my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2024 we've got jay's top 10 most anticipated movies of 24 jay i want to let you start because you're okay. so fucking sexy i want Let's to do get it. down on it but -da -da, but -da -da, meaning you're dead in your mouth okay uh my, uh, this is gonna be we'll save uh save memorable mention honorable mentions for yep. the end in the end yeah uh yeah. this is gonna come as a shock uh to a lot of folk okay but it's fine, you know, much like to the uh, Republicans that said, I lost in 2020. Uh, Final Destination 6 is my number 10 most anticipated movie of 2024. And I'll tell you why. Because the premise is there, it's it's basically a reboot of the is entire it six. Yeah, I don't think six. it's six. Is no, it? it's no, it's six. I looked this up. The, the okay. Final Destination Five came out in 2011 or 2012, I think. So it's been a hot minute since we've had a final. I thought they did the, just the Final Destination. I, I could be wrong. I, I don't, maybe I'm, they did. I'm, well, I don't know what the the last movie was called, or maybe I don't know. Whatever. This is the new movie that's coming out. It's a reboot, but it's gonna. It's like instead of it taking place a, among teenagers, it's about first responders and them narrowly avoiding death. And their perspective, and then it also explores the origins of Tony Todd's character, who was integral in all the other Final Fantasy movies. Just alone on that synopsis has got me hyped for it. Because listen, the new Saw movie did a very good job of kind of soft rebooting the Saw franchise. They can go in a lot of different directions. I think the synopsis for Final Destination Six is the same thing. The idea that it's first responders, I think that's a great. I find, I think that's amazing. Like you know, EMTs or firefighters just. Like, like narrowly dodging death and then having to deal with the consequences. And then you get to explore Tony Todd's backstory that again, that's been like a main staple in the final destination series. And you get to maybe figure out why he is the way that he is. I, I think it's yeah. great. I think it's cool. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest with you. I, so I don't have that one in my list because I, I I've heard like, I think it was like over a year ago, they announced that they were going to do this movie and the main, the creator of it, uh, who we were going to have on the show at one point, I think one of our schedules got messed up. Uh, Jeffrey Reddick, I want to believe he is watched his name. the channel and said, I'm not going to be part of that. That's possible. But yeah. I think someone's schedule got fucked up. It may have been ours actually, but either way they announced and he was going to have something to do with the creating it. Very excited about that. I will go ahead and I'll say that's in my honorable mentions as well. Cause it just, it's not listed under anything. I don't know what the fuck is going on with it, but I'm with you, dude. I hope we get that in 2024. I, 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 well, um, and, 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 and to be fair, I don't think it's going to come out like it's going to start filming um, in 2024. And then I think they said that the latest that it might come out is or the earliest it might come out is uh, late 2024. Yeah. So it's possible. So it yeah, works. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it still works in the, in the grand scheme of things either way. Um, my number 10 is going to be. <laughs> um, it's gonna be. I just, I, I just watched the sequel. I just watched the predecessor the other night, and I absolutely loved it. Um, even though it had its problems, my number ten is gonna be Spider-Man uh, Across the Multiverse. I believe it's called. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it, no, it's uh, Beyond, Beyond, Beyond. Uh, Across okay. was the second one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. Uh, and I'm trying to keep it in the same slot god damn it you guys know what i mean but yeah i just watched I, i've been waiting to beyond watch the I watched it yeah beyond the mool uh just watched it for the first time with the kids and while i think that the themes were great i thought the animation was fucking wild dude you can when you watch that movie you're like i don't understand how they made this there's so much happening on the screen constantly mm -hmm. it's it's so impressive um and i love that they did spider-man 2099 that was dope as fuck I love yeah. the themes going yeah. on with Miles Morales. Uh, I love that they brought back Jogging Pants Spider-Man. Uh, the only problem I had with it is by the end of it, you're like, Jesus Christ, you guys are throwing way too much in here. Like, I was really 
invested in what was going on and now we're just like spreading it out mm -hmm. um so much and then it ends on this cliffhanger it doesn't feel like it really had an ending that being said if this is the penultimate or the, not the penultimate if this is the final version of that the ending of that trilogy i think it's gonna fucking kick so much ass they've done yeah. such a good job with I, I i i too am looking forward to that movie and i um i only watched across the spider verse just recently i don't like like a few months ago i remember people like there was all this shit in the in the press about it and they were like talking about like Gwen Stacy. Is she androgynous? Is she like the, I don't know. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking? It looked normal to me. I, I don't know if people are just making a big deal about nothing. It was a fine movie. I think that Into the Spider Verse is by by and far a better movie, but it wasn't bad at all. And I love like I love the 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 fuck you kind of thing that Miles Morales is doing to the whole um, Spider Man universe because it's like he's the anomaly in the movie. So he shouldn't exist, and I like yeah. I kind of like that shit. I, I always like that kind of like wild card thing, and and the guy being a maverick and doing his. I, I like that. I thought it was cool. And that scene when when Miguel O'Hara, I think Miguel O'Hara is the is 2099 Spider Man, when he's like, "You are a mistake." I'm like, he's yelling at him on the train. Yeah, it was so fucking. I was cool. or Oscar I thought, um, Oscar Isaacs. I, yeah, I it was, was so well acted. It's so good. Yeah, and and uh, Jake Johnson, I think it does the. Oh. Uh, by the way, uh, let me just shortchange myself real quick because you guys are right. I, I Googled it. I don't know why this popped up when I was Googling it. Um, it's not coming out in 2024. It looks it, They took it off the release schedule. It's looking more like 2025. So let me just say really quick, I'm going to switch that to Furiosa because that was my first song. What the mentioned. fuck? It's in my goddamn <laughs> list too, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I thought it was. I don't know why. I must have missed Well, something. I don't I care. I'm, I'm keeping mine. I'm keeping mine. I don't care. So I will go with Furiosa. I'll say this, dude. I'm not that the big max max mad max uh the the, the tom hardy one that came out that's as much fake. as everybody else that's is fake. it's a movie i could throw it up i could throw it up and i could watch it and just be wowed by the effects and just eat some popcorn and have a good time i just watched the trailer for the first time to this tonight and i was just like i didn't think i was interested i was like okay same stuff like whatever but when i watched the trailer and i saw it i was like oh man i'm there day one i'm getting the popcorn i'm looking forward to just a special effects extravaganza and some beautiful sets uh, I thought so Tom that's... Hardy would come back, but I guess not. But whatever. No, it's uh, but it's Chris Hemsworth and uh, Anna Taylor Joy. So you know, Hemsworth is a bad guy. In it. I wanted Tom Hardy to come back as Mad Max. It's literally yeah. called Mad Max. Furious. That's true, but it does look good. So sorry yeah. for that flub. My bad, guys. My bad. Um, that's fine because my number fucking eight was goddamn Spider Man. <laughs> What's your number nine? Well, I don't know now. Uh, no, number nine. My number, nine. Num no, my number nine is um, it's Bioshock. Uh, it's coming to Netflix. Really? Uh, I did not know this. You didn't know? Yeah, dude. I, I, did I think not I see mentioned this that like, uh, three live streams ago. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. I love Bioshock. I love the story. The story is so amazing. Andrew Ryan, big the big daddies, the little sisters, all the 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 um, the craziness that Bioshock can be in a movie. I'm I'm nervous and I'm excited because it's coming to Netflix. Netflix has shown that they can fuck things up really bad. But I'm I'm just excited to see an actual live action Bioshock movie. Um, I just recently got done playing Bioshock Infinite. I just beat it, um, the the remastered version of what I, I played all three of them. Um, it's it's one of the best dystopian type of uh, stories I've ever played through or or, or read or whatever. Because um, I also read the book. <laughs> Uh, Jay, I just I, I did just Google it. It does say it's not expected to arrive until 2025 through 2027. That's incorrect. Um, <laughs> so moving on with what I was saying, I still think I can't Sorry. wait for it to drop. Oh, no. I don't. I'm not changing it, so it's fine. <laughs> let uh, it ride. Uh, yeah, let it ride because you know what? They can move up production and it could come out next year. Hey, it could happen. So Believe. fuck you. Fine. Believe you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not going to hear your goddamn bitching ass comments. I'll. I got a backup. <laughs> I'll do a backup. But yeah, listen, I am excited about that movie. Like, even though it's a Netflix produced movie, which again, it can go sideways underwear really quick. I still think I don't know. I, I think it's gonna be good, man. Like I like it's gonna be interesting to see what they pick and choose as far as like what to include in the story and what they leave out. But the problem is it's such a rich story. I feel like the movie should be three and a half hours long, not two hours or whatever they're trying to do. But anyway, okay, you can back it up. I'll just use a, I'll just use an alternate for my number okay. nine. Go, do you, okay, I'll, I'll let you decide what that is. Uh, meanwhile, I was clicking on the wrong screen. Hey, you know what? The best things 
It's always darkest before the dawn. We might have fucked up the opening to this, but we're going to finish fucking strong. My number nine is going to be Civil War. Uh, this is a movie. It's mm. Alex Garland that's directing this. The guy who did Ex Machina. Machina? Machina? Ex, Ex Machina? Ex Machina. Ah. Uh, he, did, uh, he did that movie, and he did Annihilation, which had some great moments in it. Uh, it's a little bit overrated. He did do the movie Men, which I thought was a flaming piece of hot dog shit. I don't know what that is. But it was awful. Don't watch it. Um, but A24, uh, Civil War is, is a movie that it's 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 literally is it based like, on the 1860 Civil War. No, it is based on a civil war <laughs> that happened today. Oh, and it oh my god, fucking, is it political bullshit like MAGA versus Democrats? I don't know what the cause is, but it's the idea that a civil war does break out uh mm. in, in America. And I gotta tell you, man, this tra trailer is scary as fuck. This is gonna be the horror movie of, in my opinion, this is gonna be the horror movie, even though it's not a horror movie of 2024, because they have this one scene specifically in the trailer where these people are standing there and they're on their knees, and and uh the dude um the dude from Friday Night Lights, motherfucking Oh yeah, I know you're someone give me his name. That 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 one dude, um, Jesse Plemons is standing there and he's like he's wearing these weird pink glasses and he's got a gun to him and he's like Elton John they're like whoa 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 <laughs> they're like we're American and he's like okay you're American he's like so uh what kind of Americans are you and they look at him and they don't know how to answer and like there's something fucking haunting and scary as fuck about that and yeah. then all the war scenes are taking place like in America like at the Capitol like all this shit like that and honestly when you look at the political landscape and you look at how the world is this is this 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 is one of the scariest things you could imagine this actually taking place. And some fucking sickos want this in this country. So that being the way we are with this shit, watching that trailer scared the fuck out of me. And also, even though it's kind of CG, it's almost like a surreal feeling. And I don't yeah. like Kristen Dunst, Kirsten Dunst. She's, She's one terrible. of the main stars. I don't in like it. her at all. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited to watch this movie. Well, I think all I got to say really about Civil War is uh, try that in a small town, you motherfucker. Because <laughs> uh, it ain't going to happen. We may have taken law and order, bitch. <laughs> Try your goddamn yeah. protest. You'll be fucking so I, I fucked. Hate, I uh, hate politics, but one of the reasons I hate politics is because I'm really scared of something like this happening, and this movie plays on that fear so well. It looks like it's going to be a good Kentucky movie. would be fucked in the, if the Civil War had gone the other way because it's split. Because like, it'd be like northern half would be part of the Union, and the southern part would be – it'd be weird. I don't even know where we'd fall because it would be like where – you'd have to have a passport. That'd be weird as fuck. It's, it's a, Dude, it, it's a nightmare. I don't, I don't right. want to live through I'm it. I'm going to go with number, I'm going to, I'm going to amend my number nine real quick because I don't want people okay. to get mad about it. My number nine uh, for, um, it's going to be um, Mortal Kombat 2. Is that this year? Yeah, it's next year. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 2024. Mortal Kombat 2 is next year uh, because they're going to introduce Johnny Cage, which I'm very excited to see. They're getting fucking Carl Urban as Johnny Cage. Uh, I do love the Johnny, the Johnny, uh, Johnny like, I don't like, listen, now, 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 now hear, hear me out. I don't think Mortal Kombat, the remake movie, like, listen, the 1995 Mortal Kombat with Robin Shu, dude, is actually really good. I've went back and watched that movie several times, uh, with also Christopher Lambert as Raiden. That movie is legitimately good. Okay. Yeah. It's corny, but it's corny in the right way. And it's cheesy in a fun way. They have fun. You know, the movie's just fun. Mortal Kombat, the, the remake that came out a few years ago. Like, I hated Liu Kang. I hated the pussy vibe that he had. Like, it was like, you're fucking Liu Kang. He's like, I don't know what to do. I'm a, I'm, I'm just a young Shaolin monk. I was like, no, bitch, you're goddamn Liu Kang. I also hated the fact that Shang Tsung, I didn't think that Shang Tsung, that the, the Shang Tsung they had was that great. Um, That he would just, like, attack Raiden and his group without any kind of consequence. Though It didn't even make sense. Like, the, because the whole idea of Shang Tsung and his army attacking it would be undercover because the elder gods would get mad that he was violating the Mortal Kombat rules. Anyway, um, despite that, the Scorpion, the Scorpion Sub Zero match was great. I love, and then the ending of the movie when they're going to have Johnny Cage show up, which I hope in Mortal Kombat Two, and I have a lot of faith. I hope it's not a lot, but it's some that it's going to be the focus on Carl Urban's Johnny Cage more so than any of the uh, like the Cole character. Remember Cole? He was the, the you know the 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 maid for the movie made up character with the family that fought gorgo outside of the yeah, garage yeah, yeah. Was, i didn't like that either yeah it was stupid because i was like you already have a million fucking characters you could choose from i don't yeah. know why you need to make cole but either way i hope that the movie focuses on urban because johnny cage is gonna be great and and i and i what i do i i always have always hoped that carl urban can finally be in a movie that gives him some kind of like big 
you know, like boost or something. Like, don't get me wrong. He doesn't need it, but I feel bad for the guy, dude. Like he got fucked on dread. He should have been, there should have been a dread too. He got yeah, fucked on absolutely. Batman. He should have been Batman. I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying Ben, uh, Ben Affleck was bad, but Carl Urban would have been great too. Yeah. Uh, Carl Urban got fucked a lot. But yeah, anyway. I, I, I'm hyped for him too to be Johnny Cage, even though I, that's 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 like I would have never thought Carl Urban's gonna be Johnny Cage, like it makes no sense to my brain. But I'm I'm hyped he's for old, him to have that because role. he's older now. I mean, earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah but I don't know. But I'm with you. I, but, and and yeah. that's it's a question as to when that's going to come out. There's no official release date, but there is a possibility it comes out in 2024. I, hope I am so tired of everybody oh. questioning my judgment of what's coming out <laughs> next year. I got to go pee, though. I, that's okay. I, I'm not going to question. I'll go, I'll go ahead and do mine. Uh, my number eight is going to be Return to Silent Hill. Now, you guys know me. I'm not a big gamer. It's not my thing. But I've been excited about this movie since it was announced. And they've already done shooting on it or whatever. So hopefully they figure it out, even though we don't have an official date yet, as far as I know. But I'm very excited because Christopher Gans, Christopher Gaines, however you say his name, G-A-N-S, he directed the first Silent Hill movie. That movie has a fucking plethora of issues, tons of issues with it. Don't get me wrong. That that woman walking around like, oh, my kid's gone. I guess I should look for her. Like no fucking, it was the actress, I think, just no fire under her ass whatsoever. But damn, Christopher Gans, that environment of silent hill i thought he nailed it the fucking nurses with the goddamn ghibli ghiblis all that shit i thought the the visions the way everything looked was really cool he was on to something silent hill was almost a fucking great film it was really almost a great film and not bad totally watchable this is the kind of movie that does need to be followed up on and it has he didn't he had nothing to do with the the 3d uh, revelations movie or whatever but this movie is going to be based on Silent Hill 2, the video game, which is a great choice. And I think it's going to fucking kick ass. I'm really excited for Return to Silent Hill. I, I hope it rules. And again, same director as the first movie. Learned a little bit. Gets to right his wrongs. I think it's going to be kick ass. I hope so. Um, while Jay's gone, I will go ahead and do my number seven. Most anticipated movie of 2024. And that film, my friends, is, as we talked about a little bit, Maxine. I thought Mia Goth fucking crushed this. Ty West, it was crazy because X just comes out. It's like, oh, an original slasher movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. This is great. Then they're like, guess what? We already filmed the fucking prequel, Pearl. Pearl, fucking uh, American psycho focused on one character type vibes. Very Shining-ish almost. You get to watch someone's descent into madness. And it was about the old lady that she killed off in X, a prequel. Amazing movie. Should have got an Oscar for it. Should get an Oscar for it. I won't because you know how it goes. Maxine to follow that up and to go into the 80s to fucking uh, LA and to have it. Apparently, it's going to be a slasher movie that feels like a Giallo movie or whatever. And I'm not that big into Italian films. Since it was to do Italian films, don't cry in front of the Mexicans. Um, I'm still st stoked as fuck for that slasher film. I think she's going to crush Kevin Bacon's in this movie. This is going to be one of the biggest horror movies of the year, for sure. I'm fucking pumped about it. I'm surprised it's not even higher on my list, to be honest with you. Very excited for Maxine to come out. Um, I'll do one more while Jay's gone, and then he can get it caught up when I relieve myself in the restroom for men or women or mix or whatever, both. I was in a restaurant. I was in a bar the other day. By the way, my wife and I went to a brewery. Had a couple of beers. They had board games on the wall, as some breweries do. They had Oregon Trail, the card game. Totally recommend it. Fucking fun as shit. You, you sit there and you play Oregon Trail with cards while you're drinking beers. I got dysentery twice and died. That fucking sucked. You should try the, the Oregon Trail. If you're looking for a present to buy a significant other and they're 90s, 80s kids like, like us, definitely get that. It was a good time. Um, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, my number six is going to be, we already talked about it a little bit. It's going to be Beverly Hills Cop. Four. coming straight to netflix i know it's called like axel foley or whatever but that's stupid we're gonna call it beverly hills cop because that's what we're gonna do today look i watched this trailer i love that they brought back the theme even if they changed it a little bit i love the fact that eddie murphy's back in the role it's it's fucking awesome just to see the detroit jacket to see him on the scene i have questions i do yeah. question it a, a little bit um uh, because i want to see him cause trouble like on two feet running around causing trouble scaled back eddie murphy doing his fucking thing as axel foley 
Uh, and, and who's to say that won't happen? There was a lot of action and like the, the, tr the fucking helicopters and the, and the buildings crashing and shit. Maybe they were just hyping it up for the trailer. Didn't love the cinematography. Didn't love the CG look to it. But I love the bad guys looking scary with those masks on. It's I, I really want it to be rated R. I really want it to have that gritty feel of the first two films. But the fact that they brought, brought back Zvin and they brought back Taggart and Rosewood, I'm pumped about that. I think it's going to fucking kick ass. I'm super excited for this movie, man. I, mm. I hope people enjoy it when it comes out. And it's not just us old folks, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see Alex Foley do what Alex Foley does best. Fold, yeah. Folding paper. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'm going to PP. Give me your number eight. I'll write it down and then you can continue down your list and I'll fill it in when I get back. Okay. My number eight is going to be, oh, fuck. I got to change that. My number eight. Oh, fuck, dude. I didn't think I'd be drawing for my goddamn honorables. Um, it's going to be uh, Dune 2, I suppose. Uh, Dune 2. It'd, it'd, it'd be Dune 2. Uh, okay, Sometimes. so to be fair with you guys, uh, and hearts and farts, in 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 all honesty, I it's been a long time uh, since I actually have seen the Dune remake. But uh, what I remember watching, and again, I was probably up to the hour and fifteen minute mark of the first Dune. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, my favorite Dune movie of all time is obviously the original, and I thought it was great. I loved it, and that, I hadn't even read the books uh, when I watched that movie. Um, and I think it came out in 1980. I think uh, it was so good. It was really good. And and, and I actually um, thought that the Dune remake was going to suck balls. I thought it was just going to be terrible CGI. It was going to be overly political. There was going to be a lot of messaging going on. And and to be fair, it, it wasn't. It was a really good adaptation of the novel. So I'm excited for Dune 2. From what I've seen on the trailer, it looks awesome. It looks fun. Uh, it, it definitely looks like uh what i expect from an adaptation so uh looking forward to that my number seven is going to be gladiator 2. um like when i first heard gladiator 2 was going to be a thing i didn't think it was going to be good at all because the first gladiator with russell crowe felt like such a complete movie that there was no need for a sequel but then i i was thinking about it, i was like I, well obviously there was other slaves right that were taking up that that fought in the coliseum it wasn't just um marcus aurelius it was other uh soldiers and there's a lot of other stories to tell so and again if ridley scott's coming back and being a part of it i think it's going to be great I, I so yeah i do want to go back into that world i think it's a it's a it's an amazing uh it was an amazing set piece it was beautifully designed the cinematography on the first gladiator is unquestionably some of the best it, and it really does draw you in to that time frame that, that, that they were going for uh yeah so gladiator 2 is my number seven hoping it's great i think it's going to be good uh but wieners crossed we don't know um but i still think it's gonna be good and my number six is going to be uh godzilla kong the new empire now i talked some poopy about it earlier in the in the live stream just because i don't want it to be like a power rangers thing where like godzilla and king kong like look at each other and like oh i guess we're like part of the morphin grid let's go fucking take on i don't want that kind of shit you know what i mean i want it to be like a really cool organic type of movie where like godzilla and kong kind of respect each other's boundaries they're not like co-workers it's not like they're gonna go hang around the water cooler and like talk, you know, about family and like make jokes. And then like, you know, all of a sudden a comet's coming with a huge Mothra dick on it. That's going to crash land in earth. And this big monster is going to pop up and they got like to save our families. We have to team up. I don't want it to be like that. I just want it to be like a territorial, like we are allies in this one instance because we have to be, but I respect your boundaries, dog. I respect where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Like, I want that to happen. Like, I don't know. But I, I still, what I saw on the trip, it looks cool. It looks good. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Godzilla in general anyway. Uh, I think Godzilla is hands down better than Kong. And I know that people are going to argue about that. Some people will. But I think Godzilla is one of the coolest creature designs ever in the 20th century. Um, so, yeah, I am looking forward to it. And I did enjoy all the Godzilla movies, the the, the more recent ones. Not all of them. The, the one with the Matthew Broderick was a total butt crack stain i hated that fucking movie that movie was terrible but um everything else you know the the 
the remakes were good. I, I enjoyed all of them. So I am excited to see that. Uh, and since Mike moved on a little bit, I'll go ahead and, and move on to my number five. My number five will be Nosferatu. Uh, I think from what I've read, it's going to be a great movie. I, I really think that Bill Skarsgård is a good choice for the role of Nosferatu, especially since he can inhabit a character in such a way that you forget it's this good looking guy like Skarsgård and, and you're convinced that he's this monster, much like he did with Pennywise. Uh, I fully expect that the director who did the witch and which I don't, I didn't like the witch that much as much as other people, but he also did lighthouse with um, Robert Pattinson and William Defoe. The atmosphere of that movie is going to be extremely amazing and, and creepy and I'm looking forward to that because I think personally that Nosferatu is the truest example of what Dracula should be. Not the the guy that looks like he smells like Dracar Nor that shops at Spencer's that like seduces your woman and he you know and he, and he has the vibe of like a Leonardo DiCaprio in his prime. I think he's like a creature of the night, which is what a vampire is. And the whole creepy thing from the the, the 1920s film in Nosferatu is exactly what the director. Eggers, I can't remember his first name, that's going to be doing this remake, Nosferatu, is going for. He even said that there's not many gothic horror movies anymore. There's not any movies like that that actually creep you out. And so I, it's going to be a lot of focus on atmosphere in Nosferatu, which I'm down for, and, and story, which is especially also important. So I'm looking forward to that, to be fair. And I don't normally look for, like, I don't want to, like, like, I don't want to, like, jump scare and have poopy trickling down the back of my legs, which happens a lot with horror movies for me. But Nosferatu seems like it's going to have a great story. So that's where I'm at with that. What number are you on, bro? I'm a, I just got done with my number five. So my number um, eight. What was? Oh, oh my yeah. Number, uh, yeah, my number seven was Gladiator 2. Ah. Uh, and then uh, six was Godzilla, Kong, The New Empire. And then my number five was Nosferatu. Nice, 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 dude. I want to get excited for Gladiator 2. It's in my honorable mentions. That's why, like, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm prickly about it because I don't, I don't think I, that's what I'm saying. It was like, I, uh, Gladiator was a closed circuit to me. Like, it yeah. was a great story. It was great in the, the beginning, the middle, and then it had a great ending where he gets to reunite with his family and they do a great shot with the, with him going through, you know, uh, Valhalla Elysium. or whatever, Elysium or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, but do not fear for you're already dead. And you're yeah, already there, but but then I but then I was thinking, I was like, well, there's a lot of other slaves that they took, Roman yeah. soldiers and shit like that that could fight their way. I, I don't know. It's gonna be it's kind of like Spartacus. Like they had another season after Spartacus breaks free. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I yeah. think it's gonna be okay. And plus, Ridley Scott's gonna be on board with it. So and that yeah, that that was my thing, dude. The fact that Ridley Scott's directed it does have me psyched enough to have it in my honorable mentions. I just don't know much about Paul Mescal, who's taken the place of the main dude in this. And I just I love Russell Crowe's performance in that so much. The frost sometimes makes the blade stick. So fucking good. Yeah. Um my number five. Oh, we're right on the same line. I like it. That's fucking tight, dude. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Nosferatu oh, is my number five, five dude. Five, 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 five. Uh dude. I'm not a huge Robert Eggers guy. Like I don't have Robert Eggers. I said Egg, I said the guy. I said Eggers, yes. but I couldn't remember his first name. <laughs> I was gonna like, say Eggs Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> Eggs Benedict. Uh, dude, I, I, I like the the witch didn't do it for me like it did other people. The yeah. Lighthouse was a great was comedy great. Yeah. Uh, and a good movie. Um, but just the fact that Nosferatu begs for a serious horror movie. Like or for a modern horror movie that takes itself seriously. Imagine if Nosferatu went to like Warner Brothers and they did it in the Conjuring universe, how bad it would be. But he's doing this. It's gonna be dark, it's gonna be gothic, it's gonna I think it's really gonna be scary. And the That's cast is so good. Yeah. Well, also, uh -huh. and the fact that while I didn't like the witch, neither one of us did, uh, as far as a movie goes, I couldn't argue with how well it was how well he did atmosphere in the witch, yeah, building that true. tension. And that's yeah. what it's going to be all about, because not only did he do a great job in uh, The Witch doing that, he also did a great job building tension and atmosphere in The Lighthouse. So, yeah, I think that is going to be the most important thing of making Nosferatu scary and, and cool. And I think it's obviously going to be a big focus on story, which, you know, uh, Robert Eggers likes to do, which is fine. I'm good with that. And I but and I also like the fact that he's recognizing 
and seeing that Nosferatu, meaning actually Dracula, that's how I see Dracula. I don't see Dracula like I was telling them, yeah. like that looks like he smells like Dracar Nora that shops at Spencer, that <laughs> yeah. seduces your girlfriend. And, and don't get me wrong, obviously the Christopher Lee Dracula from back in the day is great. And I even like the Monster Squad. I think the Monster Squad Dracula is one of the best Draculas I've ever seen. But I want to see like a truly grotesque, like if you're talking about a master vampire that's lived for thousands of years, they're not going to look, you know, Mr. Sexy Hot anymore. Right. Yeah. I, and I agree, dude. And I think, and I love what he said about it. He said, like, you won't even recognize Bill Skarsgård in the make, in the, in the makeup. That's and what shit. I said. Yeah. He's doing his own thing with it. That's, it's going to be fucking great, dude. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be his best movie. And by the way, he also did the Northman's. Thank you, um, uh, Imran Jabbar, for mentioning that in the chat. I did mm-hmm. like the Northman a lot. I thought it was a movie that could have been a lot better if it didn't get dragged down by trying to be something more special than what yeah. it was. I thought it got a little lost in trying to be too heady, but it was still good. You know, I also think that Nosferatu is going to be exactly what Bram Stoker's Dracula was trying to be. Yes. And, and it's failed. Because yeah, I fucking... Bram, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie, was way too boring, and it, it was just it, it got lost real quick. Yeah, dude. Fingers crossed for that one. Um, my number four is going to be, I feel like, a surprise uh, to people uh, that it's this high on my list. But if you know me, you know how much I love the original movie. And to Barbie some Girl people too. that will... Yes, it's actually... Barbie that's the too. one. I haven't Barbie, watched Barbie uh, yet. I saw, you know, I think it's free now on HBO Max or some shit. Uh, you should watch it. It's actually... I mean, it is funny. I don't agree with uh, a lot of the shit that they do in that movie, but like, it was funny. Uh, mm-hmm. Twisters. Twisters, the sequel Ooh, to Twisters. it's in my Bill honorable mention, child. Yeah, I dude, I'm look, it's not gonna be Bill Paxton. Nothing's gonna be Bill Paxton, Helen Hunt. Is that what you think it did? Me, Joe. Uh, never gonna be that. But I get so fucking horny for tornadoes on the screen, man. Uh, I even love Into the Storm. Uh, that movie had like no actors, no plot. It was just like, hey, here's some fucking CGI tornadoes. And I still love that movie. The following up on this, yeah, yeah, and the fact that David Corn Sweat's gonna be in this, who's the upcoming Superman, so that's exciting. The writer of The Revenant, which was a badass movie, Leonardo DiCaprio, is going to be the writer for this movie. I feel like they're going to take it seriously. And I feel like I really hope, I'm just, this is more of a hopeful than anything. It's not a guarantee, but I hope that they do something cool and they give us the most realistic tornadoes we've seen on screen. Because if you go back and you watch Twister, yeah, are the Twister CG? Sure. They still look fucking amazing, dude. They still look fucking awesome. And I would, I just, I fucking hope to god that they keep the spirit of that original alive and if they do it could be my favorite movie of the fucking year dude i'm yeah, so dude, I actually i was actually shocked i actually want to see a new twister uh movie or, or something yeah. around tornado it's been a it's while been, it's been a minute so i think it i think it's time now i want to make a parody to make it about twisters and i want to have jack black and will ferrell star as meteorologists <laughs> chasing down tornadoes and i, I want to call it suck me sideways <laughs> like, the, the, title, like the title of the movie called suck me sideways and it would be jack it's Black actually about titty twisters yeah but no yeah <laughs> twisters uh that, like again it's on my honorable mentions i almost put it in uh for my number eight slot but yeah dude i like again when did twisters come out or twister it wasn't in like 2006 i want to say yeah it's been that fucking long well, yeah. when's the last time a really good tornado disaster movie has come out i, I don't even fucking know into the storm was the last big one that i remember for sure yeah so yeah i'm looking forward to it too my number four will be uh the big uh, dicks from swinging tips big dicks from norway part seven uh creamy cum in the christmas lights that's gonna be a (laughs) it's gonna be a big hit uh it's gonna be a huge hit it's probably gonna win oscars and academy awards we don't even know i heard the cinematography on the cum itself while the light hits it is something to hold your breath and suck your partner's dick for i will say that god are you there it's me margaret i'm gay and there's nothing about that that's wrong i just am saying margaret i'm gay uh, no, I will say my number four is going to be Craven the Hunter with Aaron Taylor Johnson. Ah, I um, I, at first I was pretty against the movie until I saw the trailer and I actually paid attention to what they were doing. I had to watch it again alone uh, on, with just my underwear and, and a bottle of lotion. But I still think they did a pretty good job. Like, listen, Craven the Hunter, as far as, far as one of Spider-Man's villains, is a, is a pretty interesting character overall. And yeah. uh, he definitely has a cock with his mouth. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I guess he bit one off and he keeps it as a keepsake. Uh, but no, he's actually a very interesting character. Um, and I guess what got me so much more hyped for uh, seeing Craven the Hunter on on the big screen is playing through Spider Man Two and, and how good of a job they did representing Craven the Hunter in the game. Uh, he has actually uh, it's so, it's so strange. A lot of people 
forget about Craven the Hunter. Even Spidey fans forget about Craven the Hunter because they always mention Venom or Carnage or Green Goblin or Hobgoblin or whatever. He, you know, he's a he's a great character and and he's like he's all bent on the idea of survival of the fittest. He wants to take on the most cunning and ruthless and predatory type of uh, prey and. He gets bored taking on all the animals. It's almost like an island of Dr. Moreau in a weird fucking way. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, and, and he goes to the city to hunt down Spider-Man because he's like, that's the big game. That's what he's, his whole life. Yeah, that's, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Of course, I, they're not. this is just the origin story, but I, I still, I hope that it's really great, and I think it will be, and they introduce that into the Tom Holland uh, maybe Spider-Man three or four. So, and as JT Custom says, it's uh, actually R-rated, which is a good sign. Mm -hmm. It's a great sign uh, for yep. these kind of movies, for sure. Yep. Uh, my number three shall be uh, Terrifier three. Oh, Terrifier, Terrifier! It's gonna be Terrifier three. Terrifier three. A battle uh, in the heaven. <laughs> dude i think in a year that we don't have a screen movie coming out more than likely um we don't have a halloween movie or show coming out uh as far as the big slashers go there's not a whole lot of stuff i'm super excited to see art the clown come back and i'm super excited that's gonna be a christmas movie look when terrifier 2 was announced uh terrifier was was what it was and we enjoyed it and it was like oh my god i can't believe they hung that woman upside down and did what they did when they announced terrifier 2 i thought two and a half hours how how does that make any yeah. sense and i watched it and it was one of my favorite movies in the entire year uh sitting in a theater watching people's reactions to that i thought terrifier 2 they added so much lore they brought in sienna lauren laver was so good in that movie uh absolutely adored that movie really loved it a whole lot and the fact that we're going to go to christmas now is such a genius move and really this i think is going to be when you hear damien leon talk about it that this is this is like his main vision like there may be more movies sure but like this is where he does what he wants to do with the story i, I think it's gonna be a fucking killer movie dude i'm so pumped so i'm pumped. terrified of what they're gonna do with terrifier 3 after the ending of terrifier 2 but we'll see what <laughs> happens in the terrifying sequel to terrifier 2 <laughs> we'll all go terrified that's a blink song sorry anyway yeah that's my number three yeah uh I don't even. Well, no, it's not. I, I was gonna. I thought it was on my honorable mention. It wasn't. But uh, my number three, it's gonna be um, Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. I had to put it on here just oh. because I love Ghostbusters. Listen, even if it's dog shit, I'll still go see Ghostbusters. I watched the 2016 Ghostbusters three times, <laughs> and I have tried every fucking time to try not to, to cry. like it. Yeah, oh. they, yeah, not cry, <laughs> but they like they they basically just came all over my face and said, "You'll like it. I don't care if you wanted it or not." And they were like, fuck your, your childhood heroes. I don't really care about that. But the movie is terrible. But I've tried to like it just because it's a Ghostbusters movie. There's something about seeing the 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 uh, the, the the proton wand and, and the and the, uh, the, the the Ghostbusters stream trying to get I, I love it. While Ghostbusters Frozen Empire looks like it's a hundred percent directed at kids, which I'm actually kind of bummed about, which you know that's fine. Ghostbusters is for kids, I understand. But the people that are going to see the new Ghostbusters movies are kids that grew up watching Ghostbusters. I was born in 84. Uh, Ghostbusters came out in 84. And so in the like late 80s, I remember one of my, my first memories is watching Ghostbusters and falling in love with it. So all the kids that fell in love with the original Ghostbusters are now 30s and 40s years old. And they're the ones that are going to go out and pay money to go see the movies and stuff like that. So, you know, it is what, it, but I get the target audience. Um, despite that, I'm actually interested because I want to see what they do with uh, Oscar, uh, the, the kid from Ghostbusters 2. Is he going to show up? Oscar Barrett, Dana's son. I mean, he wasn't – you didn't see him in Afterlife. Uh, that would with, make so much sense. I know. I, I don't know why Oscar Barrett would have been – he should have been the guy immediately like Captain American. Uh, American. It American. should have followed him. Like, yeah, honestly. well, it should have been. I think so. I, I think – I would have I, – honestly, if it were up to me, I would have cast Paul Rudd as Oscar. And oh, like and that's had cool. him had, had yeah. him reading, you know, the idea like he could have been this nerdy kid and then Missed like then go surreal and, and he was like a college like dropout, and then yeah. his whole idea was like trying to get Ghostbusters back up on the market. Anyway, I'm Dude. the Frozen wow. Empire, while it looks like a cartoon, I'm still gonna go see it. I'm still looking forward to it because it is at least you get to see Paul Rudd in a Ghostbusters uniform busting ghosts. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I and and I you know how I feel about it. I I, I, I actually expect it to be your number one or number two, to be honest with you. I, I'm fucking bummed after I saw that trailer about it. And it's not, I'm it, not, it, it, it didn't fill me with hope. 
It doesn't no. fill me with hope, but I, I'm still going to go see Ghostbusters. It's Ghostbusters. Yeah, and I'm in no way disagreeing with you. I think you should be just hyped because that's your favorite movie of all time, right up there with uh, Back to the Future. So I think you should be just hyped as you are. Yeah, I just, man, I just, I think it's fucking. But guys, so down in the like, comments, let us know. Do you not think it would have been a smarter idea in Afterlife to make the main character, which I, I get why they did the Spanglers, because obviously you got to pay respect to Harold Ramis. And I think what they did yeah. at the end of that movie was very touching. It made me cry. Like 100%. That was the best part. I made sure. me fucking cry. It was great. And I, 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 I would keep that scene. 100%. I would keep that scene no matter what. But make Paul Rudd Oscar. Yeah. And it would, that be, been it, would be a, it would have been a cool story. Imagine if Oscar Barrett had tried to restart the Ghostbusters thing in New York and everyone was like, we don't believe in ghosts anymore. It's been years since anyone's. And then he moved out you know, maybe to follow Egon out into the old Kansas and then Egon died and he just became a school teacher. Yeah. And, but the movie follows Oscar around. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I would have thought that would be cool, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm personally hugely fucking disappointed with what they've done with ghostbusters. Although I do love the fucking, I love the throwbacks to Harold Ramis and how they're doing that. And that, that teared me up too. I'm just so disappointed how they made this like marvelous and how they're doing. The, the, I, I think yeah, the frozen empire. Nothing, it, it just lost the complete essence of the first two movies. And it, it's, but like, like Everybody's going to be like, well, Jay, it's your number three. I mean, I'm still looking forward to going. It's a yeah. ghostbusters movie. I, I get mean, it. I, like if it was a shitty nightmare in Elm street movie or a Halloween movie, we'd all still go see it. If you're a huge, right. a, a mega nerd for it. But I, I definitely think it's a hundred percent catered to a younger, like you know, toy selling yeah. market. So I no. mean, it is I'm it. with you on that. I, I totally get it. Uh my number two is gonna be Alien Romulus. And this is not know, just sounds, because that, that sounds hot though. I forgot all about it. And uh, Alien <laughs> Romulus sounds fucking hot, dude. Dude, I and, Do you know and the that, story and about Romulus and Raymond's God's uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's not the official Kogasuko. It's it's not the official title. That's that's what they're thinking it's going to be called. Uh, in some places, it's still listed as untitled alien movie. But look, man, an alien movie coming out now, and it, it's it's it does it's set between I believe Alien two and three. Yeah. I believe I want to say maybe it's between Alien one and two, but one of those. Um, but the fact that it's not actually going to have anything to do with the other movies, it's going to involve a young cast. And it's going to have them running up against the Xenomorphs and the fact that it's going to be directed by Fetty Alvarez, who directed the Evil Dead 2013 remake, directed mm -hmm. Don't Breathe. He's been doing a lot of production stuff, a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, I think it was. Um, he's been doing a lot more production stuff since Evil Dead and since Don't Breathe. The fact that he's going to be directing this movie and the fact that Ridley Scott himself watched the movie. The reason it was green light is because Fetty came to him and he's like, I, I have this idea for an alien movie. Really Scott liked it so much. He approved it. I don't know if they needed his approval or not, but really Scott better watched to have the his movie. approval than not. Yeah. And he watched the movie and he told Fetty Alvarez, this wasn't, he wasn't being interviewed. Fetty Alvarez just said, this is what he said to him. He said, it was, he said, what can I say? It's fucking great. Fetty Alvarez doing an alien movie could be the exact alien movie that everybody wanted when they went and watched prometheus or alien covenant i love prometheus i like alien covenant but i think this movie with the way that alvarez does horror uh the the idea that's going to take a step back from everything else going on and tell its own esoteric story is going to be fucking amazing dude i think this is going to be i think it's going to blow people's fucking minds i think it's going to be exactly yeah. what everybody wanted when prometheus came out like I, again, that's another franchise that no matter how bad the movie is, I'll go watch it. Like I think Alien mm -hmm. Resurrection is one of the biggest pieces of shit to ever come out of the Alien Xenomorph story, and Alien Three isn't far behind. But uh, I, Alien Romulus, they should just keep that name. That sounds fucking amazing. That Does sounds like dope. some hot shit. I like that shit. That's some hot, hot shit. That's some I'm hot going girl down, shit right there. Down, I got hot girl shit to do. I ain't got time for you. <laughs> uh, but I will say one of the. The, you know, in my opinion, what they could do instead of setting it between Alien 2 and 3, yeah, sure, do that, and then make Alien 3 and 4 never happen. Uh, Ripley doesn't fucking have a chest burster come out of her fucking chest in the <laughs> third one and die unceremoniously in a pit of lava and then come back in the fourth one as some kind of fucking weird and, hybrid. And, and then, again, it's not going to tie into No, I know it's, it's not, but I'm saying this story, is what but... I, I'm just saying this is what I wish they would have done. Because yeah. this is what Alien fans want. Give Ripley... A real fucking send off. Give uh, uh, Michael Bean's character a real fucking send off. And Newt, and how Newt do, as how well. Do you kill like, Newt you, like that. You, you kill him off screen in the third movie, and then she dies again unceremoniously, dripped into some, 
dropped into some fucking lava to to, to make sure that the that the alien chestburster doesn't fall into Wayland's hands. And then in the fourth one, you bring her as some weird fucking hybrid chick that hangs out at Kmart late at night. It's weird. <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited to see what they do with the new cast. Like, of course, and, and you know, at this point, they could even have set the thing far into the future, and I'd be fine with it. I love the alien uh, universe. So whatever you could do a lot with that, but setting it between two and three with a new crew, I, I, I mean, I, I get it. But if you're going to set it between two and three, I would just personally just say, fuck that. Just say three and four never happened and just create like a new story with real, yeah. like Ellen Ripley. Yeah. And of course, I mean, the way it works with this, with this being such a so wide spanning mm -hmm. universe, you could just be like, hey, there's also Xenomorphs on this fucking planet. And these are all going to be young characters, by the way, which is genius. Yeah, but that's but what then you got to deal with does. other aliens. Like, what if the, what if the, the Xenomorphs had attacked aliens from the planet Zagadoot? Like, you know, because they're Zag all like <laughs> Zagadoot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I fucking pumped for it. It's still going to be good. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. Uh, my number, number two, two is uh, Beetle Guys 2. Beetle beat dice too. The uh, dice juice. Beetle beat, beat, oh, beat the juices beat out of your second wife. You. Uh no, beetle juice Dirty too. Venezuelan yeah. hooker who plays tight end for the Texans. Oh, sorry. What was God, it? It was damn, Beetlejuice it's like, too. It's like reading a post on 4chan. Uh <laughs> Beetlejuice 2. Uh, <laughs> Beetlejuice 2. Uh yeah, I, I think I, I talked earlier about it. I, I'm very excited to see Tim Burton reuniting with Michael Keaton for this movie uh it's one of the roles that michael keaton has gone on record multiple times saying that he would do anything to come back for that role so you know there's gonna be a lot of passion going into him playing the character again jenna ortega is gonna be perfect in it you know what she did in wednesday uh on on the on the netflix series i think beetlejuice 2 is gonna be is it gonna be as good as the original fuck no but is it gonna be amazing to see michael keaton back as beetlejuice Fuck yes. Fuck yeah. And that's what I'm there for. Also, the Tim Burton direction and also working with Michael Keaton again and, and his style. Of, I mean, there's a lot of, like, dude, um, the story is, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. Are they going to, like, pull from the cartoon series? You know what I mean? Uh, from, you remember the Beetlejuice cartoon series where it was, like, Lydia and Beetlejuice were kind of, like, best friends and they had adventures? Are they going to pull from that? Like Lydia's going to be in it and she's going to be like, yeah, me and Beetlejuice are cool now. Or is it going to be more scary or more like unhinged like he was in the first movie, which I think I'm I'm thinking more on the latter. I think that Tim Burton always envisioned Beetlejuice as being like not your best friend, but he'll use you to get to the next strip club if he needs to and borrow a couple Hawk, of bucks Hawk. from you. Yeah, he'll borrow a couple of bucks from you to get an Uber yeah. after he leaves you with the cops. I I'm, I really do. I mean, again, it's fucking, it's Michael Keaton coming back as Beetlejuice. Nobody ever thought we would ever see Michael Keaton back as Batman. And now no, I, we get yeah. to see him back one more time as Beetlejuice. Fuck yeah, dude. Let's bring it on. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to happen either myself, dude. I really did. I never thought this movie was going to happen. It was like one of those Back to the Future remake things, which, God willing, that will never happen. Never, but ever. Because it was, it's going to be a fucking goddamn Volkswagen bug with Justin Bieber as Michael J. Fox. It's going to be awful. <laughs> but by the way, but, Beetlejuice 2 makes more sense to me than uh, than Batman. Because you could put makeup on Michael Keaton and kind of de-age him. If yeah. you do it smart, you could do practical effects and then lightly de-age him with CGI. Yeah, and I think that so so uh, I'll just uh, Beetlejuice two did not make my list. It's in my honorable mentions, but the reason it is is because I just don't trust personally. Uh, and I, I I fought with this. I was like, I got to put it in there, right? Like, why am I not? Why am I not putting this in there? It's got to be in there. The reason for me is because I just don't trust Tim Burton right now, and I don't trust Johnny Depp or Johnny Depp, but I, I just don't trust Tim Burton and like what he's done lately with this. And and my mind started going to Dumb and Dumber two. Uh, my mind started doing to all these legacy sequels and things like that. Dude, if this movie's good, if it's good, it'll probably propel itself to like my top. I think it's going to be great. Movie. I think it's going to be good. Mike, Mike was um, listening to too much like, how could this happen to me? <laughs> I, want it, I, I want it to be great, dude. I just, I have a bad feeling. I know, there's I some really people do. I don't think it's, they think it's going to suck. I understand. It's fine. Yeah. I, and, and hopefully they, they stick with practical effects and they do all that stuff. Right. I, you know, you know that. At yeah. This we point, don't need to talk about it. Yeah. It's already there. We, we have the so, same number one, yeah. and that number one is definitely going to be Fifty Shades of Gray, uh, the reboot. Yeah, it's, um, it actually it's called Fifty Shades of Gay. Uh, yeah, it's a new one, and it's exactly it's gonna what be, we it's, it's going to be a new, different take on Fifty Shades yeah. of Gray. 
Uh, yeah. And I'm excited. Fifty Shades of Gay is going to be an interesting type of concept movie. Yeah. And Why can't or, men do this to each other? That's what yeah, we asked ourselves. I, I and then wanna, Jay and I, I practice it. Yeah. And uh, like, yeah, obviously we practice it a lot. And then we're like, yeah, Can this happened. No. Uh, well, obviously it's going to be Deadpool. It's time. It's Deadpool three. That's, that's the, that's the movie it is. It's Deadpool three. And you know what? It's weird, dude. Cause in a year where like, I had no fucking, uh, well, I did have Spider-Man in there, but like for the most part had no super. And this is weird because like every year we do this list and almost every year we have two, three, sometimes even four superhero movies in there. Yeah. But the only one to actually make the list. Uh, I had Craven Deadpool Hunter 3. And, and Deadpool 3. Yeah, but like for Deadpool 3, it's just like, that's exa- Deadpool 3 is exactly what fucking Marvel and DC, that's what superhero movies need. Yep. It needs a star. It needs an irreverent script. It needs balls. It needs some strange. It needs, it needs a representative of Mint Mobile. <laughs> yes. Duh. It needs that. And I am scared a little bit because uh, is it going to be all about cameos? Is the multiverse thing going to fuck it up and make it convoluted? The beautiful thing about Deadpool and Deadpool 2 was they were like, they felt low scale and they felt like it's about the movie, not about Mm -hmm. the cameos, not about all this bullshit, not about tying it into the fucking Kang and whatever. It felt like a fucking movie and it was comedy, which we don't have comedies anymore. And that's what makes Deadpool so special because it's a dirty comedy, which do not exist anymore um, in today's day and age. But that Plus, you add Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine and wearing the yellow suit. Get the fuck so out of good. town and take a bus, man. It's well, Deadpool 3. I, I think that, yeah, I think that the, the world has been deprived quite too long of superhero comedies. Even though we did have uh, the Suicide Squad uh, reboot, which was great, and then Peacemaker, which was awesome as well. But there's something so unique about Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool that just it connects with so many people uh that the fact it, it, like it's 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 this metaverse in the in the comics in the comic book movie world that doesn't exist anywhere else and that's why it's so unique and so special and again Ryan Reynolds was born to play that part just like Michael Keaton in my opinion was born to play Batman um you know or or um Sean Connery was born to play James Bond uh it's 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 great it's it's amazingly casted and of course there's going to be cameos in it but i i think it's going to be the joke in of itself while they're the, they're going to handle it in the same type of goofy way they did in deadpool one and two it's going to come across and it'll work and also you got to put it into faith that ron riddles is in a lot of control in this yeah. I, I don't there's True. no ron riddles doesn't need money to come back and do this i mean the motherfuckers own he got rick moranis to come out and help him do mint a mint mobile commercial he got ryan rick moranis to do that uh so he doesn't if if there was any type of like backstabbing double backing bullshit if ryan reynolds was aware of that well well, we're gonna come in and and take over and we're gonna change he would have just said fuck you you can yeah. recast Deadpool and you guys can go down in flames because that's what will happen. And they're like, no, no, no. What do you mean, Ryan? I think that Reynolds is smart enough to be like, I'm not going to be a part of a project that's going to hurt my legacy as that character who I'm very much in love with. And I like doing that character. Again, he's so much in love with the character of Deadpool that he was the one that back in like 2008 or 9 or 10, I can't remember, that made that. What the fuck was that? that scared the shit out of me, dude. Um, that's right, too. That, uh. <laughs> uh, no, that that uh, that made that pitch at a comic con, you know, with those effects, just yeah. to pitch the movie, just to show what yeah. it could be like. The that's leak. how that's, and he did that free. He did that free yeah. just to get the movie on the big screen. So again, yeah. I think that Deadpool three is going to be a breath of fresh air. And if I were Marvel at, at at the juncture that they're at currently, I would put all my eggs in the basket with Deadpool three and be like, I would go to Ryan Reynolds and be like, listen, we fucked up bad. We don't know what to do anymore. Uh, and this could be your last movie as Deadpool. Can you please help us out? You can write in the sequence on how we can reboot this, like the, the fucking MCU. And it would be the simplest thing. And it would be very much a Deadpool thing where at the end of the movie, after the credits, he does like a nuclear bomb, you know, push the button, kill the Marvel universe. And there you go. You restart everything. That's it. Yep. No explanation I, needed. You don't need a fucking three ass, you know, three hour movie to do it. That's it. I, I'm just, I'm also looking forward to it just because of how many, like, you know, I am looking forward to see how many cameos that they're going to try to squeeze into it because that's become the joke. I hope they throw Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield in it just to make, like, they die off or something. I don't know. 
You know what Jay, I mean? Do you, do you know what Deadpool three is going to do? Do I know what Deadpool? Is do you gonna, know what Deadpool rule. three? What Deadpool three is going to do is um, oh shit, hang on. Uh, it's going to do this. Demonetized. It's gonna save the day. You see my day. little strange. Uh, it's gonna be save the day. I, I I fucked that up a little bit. But yeah, it's gonna save the day. I think it's gonna change. It's gonna it's gonna save the the um the motherfucking Landscape. superhero movie day. I do. I believe that in my heart and soul. So that is our top ten most anticipated. Jay, what you got? Honorable mentions. I'm gonna let uh, you. I'm gonna, I, I gotta go pee. So I'm, to gonna, I'm gonna run them down really quick. Um, I already I I put uh, so National Treasure three. I like those movies, so I I kind of want to see them. Uh, I want to see Nick Cage come back and like, there's a bap on the back. I want to see that whole fucking thing again. Uh, I want to see Roadhouse, the remake of Roadhouse with the UFC yes. fighter. I think that's oh gonna my. be a good one. Um, Mickey Seventeen, which is a new Robert Pattinson movie coming out, a sci-fi movie. And I read the synopsis, and I was like immediately in. After I read the synopsis, I was like, I fucking love that. The idea that you go to space and then you die and they clone your body and then he's the Mickey, the seventeenth Mickey, and then it's gotta be all sorts of fucking crazy. Yeah, shit going the director on there. of um, Parasite is doing that shit. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. I, yeah, because everything else I put as backups. So yeah, it's just those. All right, all right. I'll be back though. I gotta go pee. Enjoy your tickle time, my friend. Uh, while Jay is gone, let me give you guys mine. Um, I've semi of a hefty list, hefty dick you know what they say um night swim was on my list until i watched the fucking trailer and you know what i thought that that looked cool halfway through it was like oh swimming pools horror i saw the end of the movie and i i left this on here just to complain all right just to fucking complain goddamn blumhouse fucking at the end of the night swim trailer you think it's gonna be a cool horror movie oh this is a neat idea maybe they get fucked up maybe it gets a little bit dark guess what happens the dad gets possessed and he starts chasing the family around that is the weakest fucking bullshit that they do in horror movies these days the conjuring universe all these possession movies it's the weakest fucking poorest excuse for a horror movie i've ever seen in my life we don't want to do the effects we don't want to make the monster let's just possess the dad and have him running around chasing everybody because the shining never fucking existed fuck night swim fuck blumhouse right now the way they're doing things so let me explain off my fucking list right now um gladiator 2 i am excited about that because it's directly by Rid directed by ridley scott uh, I just, I'm confused about how it's going to be without Russell Crowe, how that's going to feel. Paul Mascal, I don't know. Uh, Joker 2, maybe. I'm excited to see it. I need to see what's going on there. I'm confused. Why the fuck is this a musical? Why? But, I'm, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, Godzilla x Kong, I'm, you know, I just, again, Godzilla minus one just blows those all out of the fucking water. So I don't know how I feel about it. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Want to be excited about it. Hope it's awesome. I have reserves. Am I complaining about these or doing my most anticipated? I don't know. Um, same same way I feel about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Why are we doing kids movies? Like that's not Ghostbusters 1 and 2 were fucking smart, genius, really good comedies, adult movies. I don't know why we're doing fucking Stranger Things. I, I, I don't know what we're doing here. That being said, I'm going to stop complaining now. The Fall Guy. Ryan Gosling. It's like he walks straight off of the set of The Nice Guys, one of his best movies. Uh, his character in this, it's about a stunt dude who falls. It's a rom com for sure, but it's also an action movie. And I just think it's a genius movie. I was telling my wife earlier, it feels like they built a movie in a lab that every guy and every girls want to go see. I think The Fall Guy with Ryan Gosling is going to be great. Quiet Place Day One. Super excited for that. Uh, I think that that franchise has not done anything wrong yet, albeit there are only two movies in. But I think it's an interesting idea. It's going to be a spinoff. Um, I'm excited for that. Bad Boys 4, if that actually comes out with all the Will Smith stuff going on, I am excited to watch that. Mickey 17, as Jay mentioned. Uh, John Bong, I can't remember the fucking guy's name, but Parasite ripped. So hopefully that will too. Saw 11. Didn't make my top 10. I wasn't a big fan of Saw 10 as so many other people were. But... Um, I did. I think it was a good sequel. I just don't think it was is as good as people said it was. I, I hope Saw Eleven rips and kicks ass. I'm excited to see it again in September, right on the cusp of Horror Month. I'm I'm super pumped that's happening and I'm excited to see it. The Karate Kid uh, didn't come close to my top ten because honestly, I think that 
And to be fair, I'm not the right person to ask because I never thought that the Karate Kid TV series would work. And I fucking love it. I do think it's run its course. Um, I think Cobra Kai has definitely ran its course. Uh, and it's not being as great as it was like a season or two ago. Uh, but bringing back Jackie Chan and having Ralph Macchio in there, I think that could be pretty fucking great. Um, even though I feel like it, it, they're really stretching that IP thin for sure. Witchboard, that, that trailer looks like shit. The trailer for Witchboard does look like shit, but I love the original Witchboard so much that I'm willing to give it a chance and I'm semi excited for it. And finally, there's a movie called Wise Guys coming out, directed by Barry Levinson, who directed Rain Man. Uh, but it's written by the script of the guy who wrote the script for Goodfellas. Robert De Niro is going to play two different characters uh, for two different paychecks. Yeah, two different characters, uh, much like, you know, a Godfather 2 type sort of thing. So if that movie, granted, Levinson has done movies even with De Niro that ended up being terrible later in his career. Uh, so I don't know how to feel about that, but it's got the shot of being something super cool. Mike, we got to do something really quick. Are my honorable mentions, my friends. What oh, yeah, I we thought do? you were doing that. Okay, you got it. Like, okay, this is only a minute and 40, but dude, it's just as funny as that fleshlight shit. Look up uh, on YouTube, Gordon Ramsay in Infinity War, and the guy is Team McGuire. Dude, it's fucking hilarious. Dude, it, I, I didn't think it would be that funny when I clicked on it, but dude, it's fucking hilarious. It's only a minute and 40 seconds. It's Gordon fucking hilarious. Ramsay, Infinity War. In Infinity War. It's uh, mm -hmm. the guy's Team McGuire. Okay, I think I got it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, this shit's so fucking good. I'm like the All editing right. is fucking perfect. Okay, you, you're you're gonna love it. You guys are gonna love it. I guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good, dude. It's so good. You're standing there, you're screwing me, and you're fucking useless. <laughs> what are you doing? Fucking up out of it! Get out! Get out! <laughs> what? You've now just confirmed in my mind you're not trustworthy, then <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> what is it? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 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 fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, get out! <laughs> the oh editing is crazy. Oh my god. You're going to blow fire in your face, you fucking donkey! <laughs> He'll die alone, as will you. Don't fucking dare. Don't fucking dare. <laughs> missy, Missy, come here, you fat mouth little <laughs> <stupid>. <laughs> Are you? What in the fuck are you doing? <laughs> fuck off! Fuck off! All of you, get out! Shit beginning, shit middle, and a shit end. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! That's so good, dude. The ending was, dude, was fucking awesome. good. I know. I know. It was, uh, it was a random thing, but dude, that fucking made me like laugh for like ten That's minutes. That's great after. editing. That's I amazing know. editing. Um, that was, that was fucking good. <laughs> I like the part where Doctor sandwich. Strange was like giving the times. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That was I hope, it, I hope Gordon Ramsay pops up in Deadpool 3, dude. Like, it would work so fucking perfect. That is the cameo if, we need. If, uh, if Ryan Reynolds, like, started a job as a short order cook. Because <laughs> he's trying to get a job. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm scooting back in time. We are all the way back. My friends, on Super Chats, we are all the way back into 9.09 p.m. Wow. We are over an hour back on the Super Chats because you guys are so lovely and you have so much cool shit to say. Can't wait to get into these with you guys. I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling my little fucking dick off getting back here right now. Let's get to what you guys have to say about all this. Um, and that goes back to... Taylor Paulson. So many stories this year. But I remember in 1998 going to Blockbuster in Green Bay. Great football team. Maybe not right now. And renting Halloween 78 and Halloween 2 and the H78 VHS box was the same one Mike has. The one where it's Lori and Michael in the back. Dude, That mm. those are strong memories. That's a good one, man. Yeah. Um, 
I, it's weird. I remember going back in the day and in and, and, uh, the video stores and renting uh, like um, Super Star Wars and Super Empire Strikes Back and Super Return of the Jedi on on the SNES on the Super Nintendo. The like SNES. I, I remember renting it on those particular consoles and also uh, like Desert Strike and Jungle Strike. I don't remember. Uh, I, I do remember one of the one of the clearer memories I remember is uh, renting Halloween Six: Curse of Michael Myers. My brother and I. Cody were like, we we didn't even know a, a Halloween Six movie was even a thing, and we were watching a, a newer newer movie, and an aver- like a trailer came on the movie. Like you remember back in the day when you watched on VHS, and they would have the trailers for upcoming movies because you know the internet wasn't really a thing. Uh, and we saw Halloween Six, and we're like, what the fuck? And it was like coming soon to uh, to v- video, and then. Um, we went to the video store and there was only like two copies and they both were rented out. And we went to the, the cashier and we we're like, do you guys, and they're like, we just got one in. And I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. I, I that, that was other than renting video games, uh, getting Halloween six, uh, the, the curse of Michael Myers, because somebody had just brought it back was, is one of my clear memories. Yeah, dude. There's no better memories than VHS store memories, man. None. I used to go through my parents' house when they were all out doing whatever they were doing and just scrounge under the couches, under the kitchen sinks and the key holder, all this shit, and just get as much coins as I could and go to the video store and rent. It didn't matter what I wanted to watch or if I could watch them within the three days. I just wanted to rent as many movies as I can. And one day I walked up at Hollywood Video with a stack this fucking big of like two-day rentals and just gleefully checked them out. I, you guys, I, if you if you didn't get to experience video stores back in the day, it's really I'm a crime, sorry. dude. It's a crime it against humanity that the younger generation will never understand that. Like, uh, my Fuck brother just came over, and and we were like, he wanted me to pull up. Uh, there's a thing called uh, Nostalgic Vampire or something on YouTube where he shows like old like shopping at Sears in 1986, but he also shows like shopping at a video store in 1996. And and his kids, my my nieces and nephews, were over, and he wanted to show them what it was like. And there's just no, even on video, like they can watch it, but you just don't understand. You don't understand if you weren't there. Like that smell, the fucking yeah. carpet smell, the fucking bubble gum dispensers. Fucking, oh my God. The it's best, so dude. The best. Child of the corn. Good man. Met this man. Wonderful person says, what's mm-hmm. good, fellas? On the Babo meter, how would you rate these 2000s remake babes? Favorite to least. Scout from Halloween 07. Mm-hmm. Brittany Fox from Prom Night 09. Alicia Cuthbert from House, mm-hmm. of, House of Wax. Half a lot. We'll go Whopper, uh 05. And Amber Heard from Stepfather 09. Um, I'm, I'm wow. going to pick, uh, for me, it's going to be Alicia Cuthbert. I, number one, I think she's hot as fuck, dude. Girl I'm next door? Yo, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Hold, for example. Sorry, yes, sir. Um, yeah, so it's going to be Alicia Cuthbert. Uh, then I would pick uh, Scout. Amber Heard, Brittany Fox. That's the order. Jay, you just absolutely nailed that fucking list. That was mm-hmm. perfection, what you just did. And I moved to strike. That's exactly what I would have fucking done. Well, there's done. no goddamn Judge Wapner around. <laughs> Scout in, in, in 07. Brown. Very underrated, I will add. Very underrated in 07. Uh, again, I enjoy her. And I know this seems like black. And I, I enjoy Scout Taylor Compton's uh, Laurie Strode more than I do Jamie Lee Curtis's from the original. I just do. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Excellent question. Jonathan Hurado. Hey, guys. Y'all watch any movies? Uh, Xmas e- Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So far, my fan picked out Uncle Buck. Krampus. Mm. Grinch with Jimmy C, of course. Gremlins. Happy holidays. Keep them hands above the sheets. For sure, dude. For sure. This is always watching, even in the shower. Don't forget. I don't need hands to do what I'm doing. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I envy that, dude. dude that's so cool that you and your family like pick out like uh, Christmas movies to watch together. That's fucking cool, man. Uh, for sure. Um, I haven't watched any uh, recently. Uh, I think that I'll probably um, I'll probably watch Krampus at some point pretty soon. But there's for me, I, I know it's weird for some people because they always like put it as like a Thanksgiving like movie. Or or, or or a series of movies. I'll, I'll probably put in Lord of the Rings and, and probably watch uh, Lord of the Rings from the uh, first one to the last one for this Christmas holiday season. I like but that. But that's so cool. I, I, like, I literally envy the fuck out of you. That's so cool, man. You you and your family just pick out, like, the, okay, these are what we're going to watch for, or for Christmas, and you stick to it. That's cool shit, man. 
Yeah, I, my my kids have their ones that they love to watch. Uh, my youngest daughter loves the Jim Carrey Grinch. Uh, watches it constantly. She also loves the new Grinch. Um, the the Kurt Russell Christmas Chronicles plays a lot around these parts for sure. For me, it's Jingle All the Way. I love to watch that every year. Um, my wife is a huge fan of um, BBC. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of uh of the uncle buck of uh of the the john candy uh movies for sure for me the only one that i would i, I really love to uh watch with the family we always do it every single year we watch christmas vacation every single year for sure That's a good one. but you know what's weird about thanksgiving thanksgiving is one of those holidays i noticed this this last year in between Al- it's really weird. almost Almost any movie that's like a blockbuster or a classic film feels right to watch on Thanksgiving. Yeah, you, you can tell, you can watch Day. Home Alone. It, it, yeah. it works. It, just it works. doesn't have to be even a holiday movie. Just like any blockbuster, when you're sitting around with the family, like it, they all feel good to watch. It's a By strange the way, feeling. Definitively, let's end this shit. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Okay, yes. there's. I'm tired of the argument. It's like, like it's it takes choice. place during Christmas. There's references to Christmas yes. shit. Like he says, I have a machine gun. Ho. Ho ho! Yeah. Like, also, it's obvious. Lethal Weapon Christmas movie, in my opinion. I saw a tweet the other day that said it's not Christmas until Tom Atkins gets shot through the eggnog. Uh, Lethal mm. Weapon's also a Christmas film to me. Good. I just yeah. want to throw that out there. At Boy Movies can't stay long, dudes. My bad if you mention this, but it sucks. The Kang actor was found guilty. Long live the Batwing from wedding. To be fair, dude, we don't know. I mean, like it's 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 impossible to say what actually happened. He may have done it, and he may have been guilty. And if he did, he deserves well, he everything. He fucking so gets. I mean, he did do you whatever know? they accused him of doing, or at least yeah, his we don't jury know. of his peers. I it sucks because I I think it sucks that, uh, you know, an adult made a bad decision and they got you know you fuck around and you find out kind of uh, what happened with him but they're not felonies they're misdemeanors but at the end of the day it sucks that for fans i agree yeah, with you. It, it sucks for fans well, if you hit women then you get everything you fucking deserve i'm not that's saying why, i know what happened what what where's uh, i always think that's funny dude like what, what happened to floyd floyd mayweather didn't get shit right 100%. And Ezra weird. Miller, same thing. Weird. People get off on it all the time. That's wrong, but also in general. So who knows what the hell happened? But I, I get what you're but saying. But yeah, man. the bat wing from waiting. Yeah, the bat wing is a hard ass thing to pull off. It's so vady. Lane mm-hmm. Bruckner, y'all got to watch the trailer of Civil War, dude. Did we talked about it? I, I'm sure that came afterwards, obviously. But mm-hmm. yeah, fucking that movie looks crazy, dude. At Boy Movie says, sucks for John Majors. I mean, if he's guilty, then he can fuck off. It was lose lose for him. Uh, that's basically, you agree with us. That's what we were saying. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Agreed, my good man. Um, thank you, Daniel Flores. Yo, it was so great meeting with you guys, in Kentucky. You guys were so wasted. Jay was shaking like Michael J. Fox. We were worried about him. <laughs> hey, yeah, it depends on what day. We had a we had a big Saturday night, a big Friday night. I was um, only I was only shaking because I had just used a flashlight, so I was coming <laughs> off of a, a, a euphoria. So I, I mean, yeah. So I don't know, man. Yeah. It, listen, I like. Here's the thing. I mean. Shocking, I know. I'm a little bit what they would call introverted. I'm a little bit nervous when I meet new people, and it intimidates me a little bit. Just a little bit, Greg, on the nipple. Not a lot, but I sometimes lactate when I have to meet I, I new people. Too. So I drink I mean, days lactation. But no, it um, was I, like I love meeting people, but I, I get a little nervous. But the funny thing is, is that uh, uh, on Saturday after the first night after the meetup. We met like the first person who came over to the booth. I was hungover. I was very dehydrated. And I put my arm around the guy to take a picture and my hand started and I shake anyways. I have like a neurological thing, but like my hand, I think for where I was like, was shaking on his back. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, I need a drink because <laughs> it was bad. Uh, yeah, we always go hard on Friday nights there. So sometimes Saturdays were a little bit rusty. Austin. I just hope the Exorcist prequel is also a Waterboy prequel, and the original Devil Slayer was a young Kathy Bates. Yep, yes. I agree. I think that's going to be great. I think that's the, a, a magical a moment in Hollywood if that happens. The Medulla Oblongata. Uh, thanks, Austin, man. Appreciate it. Danny Flores says, your advice to go to Spearmint Rhino was the best. Yep. That place was literally you. across the street from our hotel, and we booked well in advance. See, you see, you're welcome. Even though apparently I was a fucking uh, goddamn uh, Gary Busey to you. We still directed you right. Spirit Rhino uh, Strip Club in Lexington, Kentucky is the best. If you want to spend a little moolah, it's a little pricey, but it's worth it if you want to spend that. 
That's true. It, it is the place to go if you're looking for a strip club in Lexington. Daniel also says the best strip club we've been to, Pandora, was such a tease. But you can literally chill, smoke a cigar, have some drinks, watch breasts and butts. That's the thing about Spearmint. Yep. They pay the fine every night. So you can go in, get you an ashtray, sit in perverts row, smoke a cigarette, and have a good time while the, the only, strippers come up and try to take your kid's college fund from you. The only problem is with Spearmint Rhino, and I think that this is with all uh, strip clubs, is that if you run out of cigarettes, you have to fucking buy it from there, and it's like fifteen dollars yeah, a pack. Yeah, that's how they because you can't leave. If you leave, they're like, "Well, you got to pay an entrance fee again." Like, Fuck mm-hmm. you, you big motherfucker! I'm not gonna say that to your face, but I'm screaming it in my head as I walk away. Yes. If you come to Lexington, Kentucky, and are looking for a strip club, trust us, Spearmint Rhino is the place to go. It's full. Uh, some good times there. Mood. And also, some bad, they play. They play times uh, as well. They play Breaking Benjamin. Yeah. They play good oh, music in there. Cool. Yeah. Um, JK, woo, what a great stream, guys. Jay, Evil Dead 2 or The Crow? I don't know, JK. Uh, fucking Ric Flair or Rick Rude? Okay? If you want to play games, Ric Flair. you're crazy. Ric, Flair. Rick, Rick Rude is badass as fuck. But I will oh. say Ric Flair. I mean, uh, Evil Dead, it's going to be The Crow. A uh, little update on the football game. I just looked over, and the Seahawks have intercepted the Eagles, and they are, are they down by down? four. They're down four with eight minutes to go, and they now have the football. In the third quarter. Yes, sir. Fourth quarter, uh, eight minutes to go. Uh, Adriel B1138 says, watching y'all on my lunch break. Thank you for keeping me sane during this work day. Hey, thank hey, you man. for fucking thank working you. these thank crazy hours. Yeah, yeah, man. Dude, thank you Not for easy watching. hours to work. Thank you for um, commenting, and, and thank you for your super chat, dude. Thank you, man. Working second and third shift is no easy task. I respect everyone who does it. Trust me. I know it's fucking wild. Brandon Ferguson, thank you, buddy. Hell yeah, the American Pie movies are responsible for my music taste along with the GTA franchise. Yeah, dude, American, like, I don't think you can go wrong by saying, is the American Pie soundtracks the best of the 90s? It might be. I mean, that would it be really screen. might be. I mean, they, they really do. Like, American Pie 1 and 2 both have, like, anthems of what the 90s music was. They do. I would go so. scream personally, but they do have great CDs. That's that's true. Uh, GTA, you remember when you were driving? Like the first time GTA had that radio switch feature, that shit was wild. Vice City oh was not. I've always loved Vice City. Like Vice yeah. City in the eighties is fucking badass, dude. Hell yeah. And I ran. Like dude, I was like, <laughs> and I ran. I that ran so hero. far. Like no, dude, you could put that on the radio while you're running from the cops. It was so good. Juke box. How many? Box. How many fucking felons did you ever see on like those cop video, the body cam videos on YouTube? They probably think that song when they're trying to run from the cops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Parton, a Mothra movie could be beautiful. Hey, maybe they should like let Mothra front his own movie or their uh, own movie. I like, think whatever. Yeah, I think Mothra works as a as a secondary character. Ride the tiger. You can see his stripes, but you know he's clean. I like Mothra, but Adrian says cheated and looked ahead to t- 2025 and man there are heavy i know weights. i know Batman stop King, it adrian don't Superman tease. legacy avatar don't three don't uh, i don't know about that one mission possible eight and that's not even mentioning the horse dude 2025 is gonna blow our tease. fucking dicks i know dude adrian do not come in here and tease out like listen uh hot super fine women You've got pussy, pussy, pussy. We got white pussy. We got Mexican <laughs> pussy. We got black pussy. We got Hispanic pussy. If you can find pussy cheaper, fuck it. Don't you dare come in here, Adrian, shilling, shilling your things. I know. I didn't want to look to 2025, but you're right. Yeah, 2025 you're... is going to be woo. And That's I'm actually, the... I, I, I'm, I, I, to be fair, I'm really, really, really excited to see what um, DC is going to be doing, especially under, under uh, James Gunn. Yeah, I want to see gonna what's be, going on there. So it's going to be nuts, dude. Jay, I got to pee now. It's I, it's 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 calling my name from deep down. Uh, we're at nine thirty four p.m. with oh. Ed Boy Movies is where we are currently. Okay, okay, okay. Once you have found it, I shall God retire to the it. restroom. Uh, who was it? Was nine thirty four? Um. With Ed Boy, I got, I got you. That's the one. All right, okay. Once you're ready to go, put it in, and we be slow. What? Okay. Uh, Ed Boy says, "Thank you so much." By the way, says, "Gonna see minus one tomorrow with the boys." Also, Jay, Monarch Legacy of Monsters on Apple TV, the MonsterVerse spinoff. It focuses on people, but it is good. Um, I just don't want to pay for another streaming service, but I, I think I heard it was pretty decent. 
But yeah, man, uh, badass. Let us know what you think of minus one because I haven't seen it yet. Apparently, it's like the second coming of Christ for some. So I want to know, Ed Boy, and you better come and bring me the report or you'll get a spanking. And I'll do it with glee and smile on my face. Um, Child of the Corn, Thanksgiving on VOD tomorrow. Jay, watch that shit. Ha. I, well, I will. If it's on VOD, I will. 100%. I haven't seen it yet. So if I'll, I'll watch it, Child. Child of, Child of the Corn is very tall. And you must say, you must do what he says. Uh, Adrian Yabar says, more well-rounded actor, Ryan Reynolds or Gosling. In my opinion, I think I'm going to go with Gosling. I think that uh, Gosling is is a hundred percent more of a well rounded actor, even though Reynolds is good, and I think he proved that. In my opinion, I think one of the uh, movies he best portrayed his acting range was uh, Buried. But Ryan Gosling has always, I think he is just classically a good actor, and I think he can inhabit a lot of different characters in a in a movie more so than Ryan Reynolds, but that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, Reynolds is good too, but I mean, I just think Gosling is, is, a, is a more experienced actor, able to deliver more consistently. James uh, Batiker says, thank you so much. Says, Yo, Michael J, do you guys have a favorite album or soundtrack of the year? Could be from bands, movies, games, or anything. Uh, James, I'll I'll bookmark that at 1001 for Mike. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't really have any um, musical uh, preference for this year or any other year. Like I don't have a band or a soundtrack that I was like hyped about. Um, I will say one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. And I know people are going to be like, Jesus Jay, it's going to be um, mass effect um, three. I think Mass Effect 3 has some of the most beautiful, haunting uh, music in it. And it's all orchestra. There's no... Um, I, I think maybe... I think I think there's a title sequence with like some... Like there's a band that's actually singing. But I think Mass Effect 3, in my opinion, has, has one of the best soundtracks ever. As far as from a video game. But... Um, that's just me, but I'll I'll make sure that uh, James that Mike uh, gets back to you at ten oh one, ten oh one. Um, DJ Graham, wow, thank you, man, thank you, dude. Uh, I gotta disagree, Jay. Uh, Tom Hardy is fine, but I just want to see Mel Gibson, the OG Mad Max, return. At this point, he spent decades in the wasteland, so he probably has a big bushy beard and a big bush for show. That dick just looks like a sandworm at this point. But I am excited to see Chris Hemsworth in Furiosa. Yeah, well. DJ, I'm not saying like listen, and this is why I'm gonna I'm gonna say to you, and I'm gonna agree with you. I would love Mel Gibson to come back as Mad Max to uh, get back in that role and have him return. But there's no way the movie would even be made at all if Mel Gibson was attached to it because of the stigma. It just wouldn't happen. So I, I, as far as like a Mad Max, like obviously I think and I agree with you. Mel Gibson is superior in every way to Tom Hardy. But Tom Hardy was just more acceptable and more palatable to be in the movie versus Mel Gibson. Um, as far as uh, Hemsworth in Furiosa, I think it's interesting and it's a little exciting to see Hemsworth in the bad guy role because you don't see Hemsworth in a bad guy role at all. And, and apparently in the new movie, he's going to be a bad guy. So I 100% you're not you're not we're not disagreeing. I I'm just saying like I if they're going to move along with a new Mad Max, just put Tom Hardy in the forefront of it. Obviously I would love Mel Gibson to come back. I would have loved Mel Gibson to come back in, in Fury Road, but just because of what happened with Gibson, it's never going to happen. But thank you, man. That was very sweet of you. Thank you, dude. Uh, happy Christmas to you. The show. Um, Jacob says here to show some love. Jay, Fuck what some people say. Saw the end of the last stream. Wham is you and Mike and your guys' chemistry. Wham ain't one without the other. Love you both. I don't know if that made sense, but it's sincere. Yeah, dude, I get you. What, I, yeah, I know. I was just like, I was in my feels. And I was being stupid. I don't know. But yeah, I appreciate that, dude. Thank you so much, dude. Um, I also think I misinterpreted something that was going on there. I don't know. 
I was just being like a like I was being a, a girl on the on the period situation. But I appreciate you. Thank you, Jacob, for stopping by and saying that. That was really nice of you. Appreciate you, man. Um Bat B says, Hey guys, I'm about to get off work, but I had to stop by and say, What's up? Hope you, the stream is going great. Love you guys. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Hope work went awesome. Hope you made that dollar bill, y'all. And uh, you're not going to spend it on strippers, but you're going to put it to the future. But if you're going to spend it on strippers, just don't spend a lot, like a couple of dollars. Don't don't go overdo it, bad piece. But thank you, man. Uh, Michael Parton, Salem's Lot would be on my list if WB releases it. Yes, I would agree with you 1,000%. I think that if WB ever gets around to working on a Salem's Lot and it actually comes out, it would have been on my list as well. Um, but... I don't know. I guess it's in the dead zone. I don't know what's going on with that. You're muted. I don't know what the fuck. Dude, Salem Slot's been in the can for ages. I don't know what's going on. With I, I think that they're just nervous to release it. I, because, I mean, um, the Toby Hooper movie was great. And then the the bullshit they, re, they re-released back in the day with, um, with uh, Rob Lowe was fucking god-awful in 2004. The TV yeah. movie was fucking terrible. There's a movie. There's a there's a thing up here. I said that I would let you. Uh, hold on. Let me, hold on. Before I do anything, I, I got to make sure that I, I know where I was. Um, so I was at. Okay. So the next super chat's at ten forty. Um, so just bookmark that in the brain stem. And then there was a question up here. Uh, okay. Wait. Uh, that I said that. Okay, so James Batiker at 1001 was saying, you don't have to pull this up. I can just says, Yo, Mike and Jay, do you guys have a favorite album or soundtrack of the year? Could be from bands, movies, games, or anything. I just picked Mass Effect 3. I know it's not of the year, but it's one of my favorite video game albums of all time. But it's so it's bands, movies, games, or anything from this year. Uh from this year. So it doesn't have to be uh, attached to media, it could be any album. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one more time by Blink One Eight Two. Uh, that's no surprise to anybody. I think that album was fucking amazing. I hope it wins all the goddamn awards. The fact that Blink can come back and create one of their best albums of their entire careers at this age and what they're doing, fucking, I'm still listening to it every day. Love it. It's one more time by Blink One Eight Two. Listen to it, you sluts. By the way, Green Day's new song is fucking amazing. Dilemma. Holy shit, it's the best Green Day song in years. Love it. Um, you say we're at James Baraka. At 1040. Yeah. He says, a little late. I work at Amazon too. I'm legit at work right now. Been here for five <laughs> years. Yeah, straight you are. out of high school, using the benefits to go to college for criminology, crime investigation, forensic psychology. Peak sucks. Hey, dude. Good for hey, you, man. man. James, congratulations. Good now that you. is like that's fucking focus and like having like something in mind and committing to it. Like you're gonna be like a fucking Batman. Or or yeah, uh, uh, James Gordon or some shit like that's awesome. The like, one I, thing, I, like when I went to college, I was like, "What's fucking easy?" Oh, psychology. I'll just do that shit. <laughs> yeah, man. The one thing I didn't have growing up at all was a plan. I had no guidance, no direction, no nothing. I was I was fucking just swimming with no fucking life vest on. And I think it's beautiful when people uh, at a young age can figure out what they want to do, make a goal and go accomplish it. That's what I yeah. try to give my kids, whether it's college or, or it's whether you want to do your own thing, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be college, but like, man, if you're smart enough at a young age to get a goal and go achieve it, I fucking envy you. Cause I didn't have that. I didn't figure out what the fuck I wanted to do until we started this YouTube channel. <laughs> well, no, it's even, crazy. Even the YouTube channel, like didn't happen. I mean, I mean, you said something a long time ago, which is true. It's like, you know, like, listen, if you're fucking like, if you get a job at Target or Walmart, like fucking work your goddamn nuts off and yes. like be a manager, like go fucking yeah. commit all your time, whatever job you're doing, man, just commit all. If it's a Taco Bell worker or a McDonald's worker, commit all your fucking time and be like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking work here. And I know it sucks and I'm, it's all sweaty and greasy and shit. And people are like, ah, ha, ha, you work at McDonald's. While they're probably like stealing their mom's credit card to buy fucking soda from the vending machine, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, fuck them. You can work your way up from any part of your like. You live in America, man. You can literally work your way up from the bottom up to the top if you want it. If you yes. want it, you commit yourself to it. You can do it. So I, I appreciate the fuck out what you're saying, James. Man, that's like I appreciate anybody that does that shit. Like, yeah. And I also like I despise anybody that says I couldn't do it. I can't. 
I got kids. I can't do it. Like, no, I mean, fuck that. I, I literally work with people before they had like two kids they were supporting and going to school and working full-time jobs. And then they're telling me, oh, I, I was just too hard for me. No, fuck that, dude. Like, any, you can do, you can pull your, like, I know it's an old saying, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and fucking do it. That's yeah, it. man. It, no matter, uh, that's the beautiful thing is that no matter where you are or where you're at in your life right now, even if that that's your last option is the a retail or like whatever you're doing currently, hey, fucking take it, use it, make it your fucking yeah. bitch and uh, climb that fucking ladder, man. Hey, that's awesome. That, and, and I'm not saying that's not the same thing what you're doing is all what you're doing is fucking awesome. Yeah, a lot of great. people have made great careers working there. But yeah, hell yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, it's awesome. Beep bop boop says, Jay, can you please react to the uh, Beverly Hills Cop 4 trailer? You guys always brighten up my day. Uh, we could, yeah, I will. Uh, we could do that next uh, stream, man, for sure. Uh, and I, yeah, it's fucking good. It looks awesome. It does. Luke Weber, good evening, ladies. Jay, I thought I told you that we were wearing pink thongs today. Thank you, Mike, for doing as you're told. That is true. I do have a pink thong on right now. I didn't read that. It's just what I wear every day. They were pink purple, so I didn't think there was an issue, but I guess uh, so. Jay, it has to be pure pink. Yeah. Uh, on, on Wednesdays, we wear pink and we get fucked by dudes. Colin McCormick. Thanks, buddy. It was my birthday the other day, the 10th. Happy birthday, Colin! Happy birthday, Happy dude. Happy birthday, dude. Uh, would love a notice not to smoke too much uh, weed by Dr. Loomis and Dr. Challenge since it's now legal in Ohio. Uh, well, go ahead. Uh, just, you know, if you're going to smoke weed, uh, set the set the pipe down and uh, pick you up a six-pack of Miller High Life. Avoid your kids. Uh, avoid your wife. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be pot it does come from the ground but so does michelob high life ultra mcdougals uh you get it and you, you you drink it you put it in your gullet um whether you're a doctor or you know uh the president you just gotta drink and numb your pain uh numb the fact that linda left you for a guy named greg with a really weird mustache and uh you know smack girls butts and uh uh boiler makers in Cubs games, do those things instead of weed because pot's illegal in two states, and you don't, you don't need that. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn Imagine off. this, Colin the comic. You got off work. You're tired. Your feet hurt. You go home. I'm gonna roll a doobie. I'm gonna roll a jit joint, and I'm no. gonna smoke it. And then what happens? All of a sudden, at three in the morning, you're caught driving a golf cart on the freeway and you've hit a little old lady named Lydia kill her because you are smoking weed the, the cop pulls you over and looks at you and you can tell in his eyes disappointment that your father who's not around in your life wants to give you and then you find yourself in the slammer jammer with a guy named big bubba pinko who's yeah. gonna fuck your ass for the next 12 bucks while you're in jail waiting for the judge who doesn't give a shit about a pothead yeah. and a murder yeah. that you caused and then when you get out of jail, many, many, many moons later, like Andy Dufresne, and your butthole whistles every time you fought because of how many yeah. times it's been fucked, you Whistle will look at that work. weed and say, I shouldn't have done it. I should have instead picked up a cold glass of Michelob Ultra and drank yeah. it at home. Safer. At the end of the day, Michael or Colin McCormick, don't be a dumbass. Don't, don't do smoke it. weed. All it's going to do is lead you to be a goddamn welfare recipient. We have too many of him, namely it... Michael fucking Myers. And he doesn't even smoke weed. He's just a welfare recipient because he's a piece of shit that won't die. Yeah. If it comes from the ground, it's probably going to make you drown or make your pants brown. That's, That's what beautiful. my dad Did taught you write me. write that on some bullshit goddamn yeah. TikTok? Shut up. He put a marble red out on my neck once. Tyler Paulson. I'm also a drummer, and my favorite bands are ACDC, Big Gun, Down and Down, 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 Def Leppard, hey, okay. Led Zeppelin, Motley Crue, Avenged Sevenfold, Metallica, Megadeth, Pantera, Kiss, Van Halen, Guns N' Roses, Bis, F F Thin Lizzy, Dip. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, <laughs> uh, I'm glad that you throw Def Leppard. I, like, I feel like Def Leppard back in the day were treated like Nickelback is today. I feel like Def Leppard was like that band that nobody like all they do is ballads, but they would rock the fuck out of, out of, to them in their car when nobody was around. And I feel like it's the same with Nickelback. But yeah, dude. And, and I've also heard a lot of like uh, people saying ACDC is like they play the same 
tune over and over again. But yeah, but they're good fucking songs, dude. Who gives a shit? Uh, that's awesome, man. I, I wish I had any kind of musical talent to do drums or fuck it. I, I wish I could play rhythm guitar and I can't even do that. But hey, man, cool. Hey, that's a lot. That's a, a, that's a that's a huge plethora of great bands. You have a type, and that's appreciated, man. I love that you love what you love. So win then. And then says, I never hear y'all talk about Major League Baseball. Who do y'all like? I am a hardcore Atlanta Braves baseball fan, man. I even pay for the uh, the uh, baseball package so I can watch all the Braves games. Disappointed me this year, but hey, we won a COVID championship. I'm a happy Braves fan. I'm a Braves guy. So when then, I have seen Angels in the Outfield a fuck ton of times, and I love that movie to death. I just don't, I can't get behind baseball watching it on TV. I think watching it live is a, is a lot of fun, and playing it is incredibly fun. But I, I never, I think, I think watching it on TV is just boring to me. Maybe it's just because I don't, I'm not in a city. We don't have a professional, actually a professional anything in Kentucky. Um, no, do not. So it's kind of hard. We like the biggest thing we have is college basketball, and that's it. So, but I mean, I, I mean, I love uh, Angels in the Outfield. It's a great movie. <laughs> if great I had to movie. pick one, maybe it'd be the Cleveland Angels. Uh, Sandlot you got an angel with you right now. Huh? <laughs> Sandlot's a great movie. I'd go with if I wasn't a Braves fan, I'd go with the Indians just because of uh, Major League. Those movies fucking rip, dude. That's great. Yep. Imran Jabbar, how when did you guys meet? When did you know this would be a friendship to last a lifetime? Also, my most anticipated is Dune Part Two. Watching since twenty fifteen. Hey, hey, thank thanks, you, Imran. Buddy. Appreciate that, man. Uh, we met at a Motley Crue concert in 1974. Uh, Seahawks, baby! During uh, like an oily uh, orgy, and we both like kissed on the lips, and we were like, "Hey, we're gonna be best friends." But no, but seriously, I think what happened was um, Cody, my brother, was friends with Mike first, and me and Mike didn't become friends until I think I was like sixth grade, maybe sixth grade, uh, and. I don't know, man. Like we we bought it over. Um, my brother invited Mike over to, to hang out, and then he ran off to hang out with somebody else and left Mike there. And I had these Star Wars toys, and I was like, "Hey, you can play if you want." So me and Mike played with some Star Wars toys. But I don't I don't know like when you you know lasts a lifetime. I, I think it, we we fell out. Um, not like because we were like mad at each other. We were tight friends for a while and then we fell out after high school and then um i don't know I, I think we reconnected around it was after my wedding to fucking godzilla <laughs> it was around like 2013 maybe and then we started playing halo but you don't you never know like i mean you 2011 might, uh, 2011 because they started 2011, yeah, 2011 but you never know when it's gonna last i mean but me and mike have the same kind of interest we have the same kind of like uh ideologies on on movies generally um but you never know i mean i don't know like we're lucky i mean i mean i'm not stupid enough to think otherwise i mean of course it's a rare gym in the desert to find a friend that's going to last a long time that you guys are uh more than just you know buddies that hang out occasionally and that's why yeah, we man. love this channel because we it get was... to hang out but at the same time i don't I, as far as like when did you know it was going to last a lifetime you never know that yeah you know it, that. Yeah, like like Jay said, that that was that was the initial time we started hanging out as friends. I used to hang out around his house all the time, but that was the first time we started hanging out. But yeah, when we started hanging out again years later, uh, we didn't have a falling out like we didn't like not get along. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we just, yeah, yeah. Like we were mad. Um, we grew up. But we started hanging out again, um, uh, playing playing video, playing Halo Three together, talking shit on Halo Three. Started coming over Reach. more often, hanging out together. It started really deep into Halo Reach, mm -hmm. and then you know, start doing the channel. And then it was just like uh, the channel was a, uh, uh, it was a thing, man. It was a thing where we, it's weird. Like when you have a friendship like we had, and you, you spent all these nights as like young kids hanging out, playing in the pool, doing dumb shit, watching movies together, all this stuff. And just fell into the internet and we're like, hey, let's do this on here. It's like, all right, let's do that. And then you fall in love with it. Like, oh my yeah. God, this is a place, all this shit that we talk about, all this shit we bullshit about, we're just hanging out, our parents are not around, like whatever. Uh, we can do this and put it into something productive. And then it was like, uh, okay. And now we're fucking, um, you know, it's been 10 plus years and we're still years, doing it yeah. and having a blast. Um, 
It's a well, life change, I, man. Like, life I, I will, I will, like a lot of people would say, um, don't get involved with your friends in business because it's always going to end bad. Well, that's true, generally speaking. But I don't look at Mike as like my friend. Like we're like brothers. Like we've been yeah. through so much together and it's been like over, I don't know, like 25 years that we've been friends. Uh, and, and, and the thing about it is, is, uh, is, uh, it's, it's a very rare thing when you can enter into this streamer type world with somebody that you trust. Cause that's the, that's, that's the, 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 the rarity when you have mm -hmm. someone that you're on at your back that you trust, because I know Mike and Mike knows me and I'm not like, I'm not going to fuck him over. He's not going to fuck me over. And we're not, you know, and we know the internet. I mean, we grew up, yeah. like we grew up when the internet first was introduced. So we understand how things work. And I've seen so many different channels go down in flames over the yeah. years, just because, you know, and they, and they, and they do the, the uh, we're friends and we're buddies thing and it just it, it crashes and it burns because they're not really friends they were they were friends in business only uh, they were friends in name only and then once the things go, get hard or things go sideways they abandon and um, yeah and they and they turn on each other like fucking hyenas and like and that's and that's the and i i get it dude that's that's just, the streamer world the streamer world or the youtube world or whatever the fuck it is a fucking dog eat dog world in a lot of ways a lot of fucking ways dude there's shit coming at you from left right in the middle in the center diagonally all the time and you gotta be like you gotta like it's always cool to know that you have uh, a, like a partner at your back that's not gonna fuck you and that we're because i mean you know what i mean like we're not we're not looking for personal advancement we're looking for the channel us all of us to advance i want to all of us and that includes yeah. you guys too i want us to be at the forefront of youtube i wish we would get recommended all the time in the fucking you know uh when you go onto youtube and, you, and you're like what's recommended videos i wish we were on there because i mean sometimes i think that we make some pretty good videos with some good thought uh provoking ideas in it but we don't get because we're fucking you know we're not like the standard youtube person we're not markiplier we're not PewDiePie. So I think, yeah, I, I think that the difference is, man, is that um, where it comes with, 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 with Jay and I, where we knew um, it's kind of a weird thing to say is because like, there was a point where this is all we had. This is our only chance. And it like, what well, didn't start because of that it started, like we both didn't have a lot going on and probably both at not great points in our lives. When we started doing this, um, it was something to do. And it was something that we knew and it was something we enjoyed doing together. And it gave us something productive to do with our time together. And now the differences between us and I feel like so many other people, like so many other people and, and not, this isn't a knock towards anybody else. Cause I feel this way working with other people too. But with Jay and I, the difference is, is that we could always, we always fucking had that respect together to where it was like, if I'm fucking pissed at you, or if I'm not happy and we've had a billion of those moments, trust me, we have, but like Jay and I've always had a fucking understanding. It was unspoken understanding that like, Hey, we have a problem. We'll just say it to each other and we'll work it out. And we're not going to fucking ghost each other. We're not going to no. stop talking. We're not going to get in a fist fight. Even though we have like, even when we got One into time, fights, it's dumb. been like, that was like a drunk thing. Yeah. And even then it was like, we're not actually trying to fucking fight. You know what I mean? It was like, it, so like, we've always had this understanding that like, you and I are on the same page. We want to get yeah. along. We want to fucking uh, we we want to be successful. We want to together. succeed together. I mean that like, and you don't really see that much anymore, right? And in my darkest times, in the darkest times of this channel, in the darkest times of our lives, or whatever, I have literally, you know, got gotten to tears, like talking to my wife or, or other people about this. Like, I want this channel to succeed for Jay more than I want it to succeed for myself. And I just don't think you know many people are like that in life. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm not praising myself i'm just saying like that genuine feeling not a lot of people have that for each other so i think when you both feel that way deep down um i i, I when i wanted to succeed for jay more than i wanted to succeed for even myself that keeps me accountable it keeps me fucking working hard and whatever's going on and i just don't think and understandably not a lot of people have that we're just fucking really lucky honestly like yeah, that's well, our luck you know, well you know like, I was say, i'm the same way with you I, like I told you before, I I I, I wanted you know this channel to be very you know received yeah. well received for Mike and his family. Yeah, I mean I look I, listen. I don't have kids. 
I don't have anybody responsible or like looking to me for yeah anything. Um, but, I'm just I'm I'm happy to be here and I'm lucky to be here. And and don't get that wrong. Don't get that twisted. Me and Mike are very grateful all the time that we have this amazing um thing on YouTube that we get to connect with you wonderful, awesome, sexy people and have these kind kind of conversations. I don't want to have these kind of conversations necessarily because I don't want to bring the the chat down talking about some heavy shit. But at the same time, yeah. we love the idea of connecting with you guys road, and man. talking about horror movies or movies in general and all that. Stuff. It's so fucking cool. Yeah. And, and we've always enjoyed it. And it's really cool uh, that Mike and I have been doing this for 11 years and every uh, negative thing that we've had to take care of that's been behind the scenes. We've taken care of that personally. It's and never once it it's never once leaked out on a Twitter fight or a Facebook fight or, yeah. a, or you know and you see that shit all the time because people are trying to grow their audience and they're trying to like backstab somebody like I got their DMs bro I'm gonna drop that shit like a tampon and you're like what the fuck are you doing that's supposed to be your friend but now yeah. like all you know all bets are off if you're trying to make it for yourself but yeah. that's not how we are that's not how we operate but yeah dude thank God that we're we're not in that kind of uh that community yeah that 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 that's why i think i think i may you know what the answer that the correct answer to this question imran as we've gone on and on and on is that who knows maybe it's just now maybe it's just this past like year or two that we realized that this would be a lifetime but you go through the hard shit you go through the fights you go through the squabbles you go through the confusion you go through everything just like anybody else in this world does and we are still sitting here doing this and you know what i feel like jay and i uh, maybe it's just speaking for myself, but I'm having a better time right now, this second doing this channel than I have in the past 10 years. I've never so hated that you more. Says it all. And that's never exactly why I'm, more that's why I'm right having now. so much fun, is because I know you're you're I miserable. fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Paulson says Black Sabbath Foo Fighters and Deep Purple smoke on the water. You sound like you're gonna die from an acid overdose. You wish, bitch. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Oh shit! Fuck! Hey, Tim! Fucking C! Hey, what the fucking man, what the fuck, fuck Tim? Hey, buddy! You come you in the final countdown. What? The final countdown. YouTube yet again failed to notify me. You folks were on. We'll rewatch the stream. Hope you guys are well. And Mike, just saw your Patreon message. Take care, guys, and chat. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for doing yeah. you. Uh, it, it, it's bollocks, dude. I don't understand it. Like. There's so many people that come out and say, I didn't know you were live or I didn't get a notification. I had the bell clicked. It's because YouTube likes fucking us in the ass and we keep saying no. And we take it. We're like, we're like Ving Rhames in Pulp Fiction. They don't care. They put a squeaky ball in our mouth and say, you're going to like it. And, and that's what we do. But um, no, yeah, dude, uh, Tim, thank you so much, man. I uh, really appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Um, I don't know what the Patreon message was. I'm sure it was like, Tim, stop showing up on the channel so much. You're intimidating all the guys in, in the chat. and With a giant hot. cock. You're too hot. But um, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, happy Christmas to you. Yeah, dude. And uh, by the way, as far as notifications go for everybody watching, I, I, I go through a fucking gamut to try to make sure everybody knows these happen. I'm not, I'm not shitting on you, Tim. I swear to God. But I'm just letting you guys know. On our, if you follow us on Twitter, if you follow us on Facebook, if you follow us on Instagram, or uh, have the bell notification clicked on YouTube, follow us on one of our socials. Does that I work? Always, I always post. Uh, apparently, the YouTube doesn't, but I always post on our socials every day that we're doing a live. That afternoon, I will post it. So set up a notification on one of those other socials if you miss the streams. That way, you know. Because well, yeah. So if you guys are like newish in the in the comments, uh, make sure you like and uh, comment on the video. That does help a, a, does. a lot. Like, like you guys don't know, it really does. Um, Jay, you're walking into a buzzsaw. By the way, the Eagles fucking lost the Seahawks. Just fuck. let you know. Just well, let you know. There's no, no sex, sex for, for me tonight. tonight. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to get that flashlight. Um, but uh, I will but I say twelve dollars. So. Go me. Yeah, twelve dollars for my sex life. Okay, it's it pays off. <laughs> um, but I will say, um, we have a Facebook group, so that helps if you join that. If Mike's yes. posting there when we're going I live, am. because again, if YouTube is not, I don't know what it is, dude. I don't, I don't even want to get into it. YouTube um, has always been a, a site that they blacklist um, certain content creators. 
if it doesn't align with certain views. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But either way, man, if you guys have the time and you have a Facebook account, and most people do nowadays, go over to the We Watch the Movie Facebook page and just, you know, uh, get the notifications or some shit. So, you know what I mean? So you're always, you're not going to be left out like Tim, Indeed. poor Tim here with his sexy face. And he's like, I just got done doing tennis practice. And he's all sweaty and hot in the in the door. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes. Uh, anyway, I, I'm just saying, like, it's weird. Like, I don't know why the bell. Like, I I understand because I I don't even, like, dude. I swear to, God, I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna put a bell notification on our video and see if I get a bell when we go live. I it bet happens. I won't. Yeah. Sometimes they won't do it, man. It sucks. That's why I always post it on all the socials uh, for sure. And do the official one. There is a, there's a fan Facebook as well, but do the official one. If you're on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, any of those, Tim, we love you. You're the fucking best dude. Thank you, DJ Graham. Do you guys ever visit, visit Mrs. Smith? I tell you. Do you guys ever visit Minnesota? That's where I stay, and I'd love to meet and hang out for however long you would stay. Take shots of tequila, play video games, watch sure. movies together. Kentucky's pretty far from here. Yeah. I've been to Minnesota twice, and I enjoyed my stay. I even went to the airport to the Hooters and had a couple draft beers. I don't know if I'll ever be back I've there I've never again. been to Minnesota. Um, Lovely place. I'd like to go. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, if we ever do uh, bound up that way, DJ, we'll hit you up and, and, and see what's up. We'll play some Golden Eye on N64 Golden and see who wins eye. and whoever loses has to pay for the the round of beers at the local uh, B Dubs and then afterwards, whoever can't drink enough at B Dubs will suck the other guy's dick and that that's always going to be the fun part. But that no, sounds um, awesome. I yeah. want to do that. I want to do that. God, is this the longest live stream we've done? No, absolutely not. Not even close. I think we were like four and a half hours one no, night, but no, we are three and a half hours deep. We are going to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Go Seahawks. Thanks for that 12 bucks, Jay. Good luck. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> hey, we love you guys so fucking much. I don't know if you can't tell that. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. you. Guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. you guys so fucking much. Hey, guess what? We're not done. We're not fucking done. We'll no, see we're going to be back night. on Wednesday. We're going to be back Wednesday on Wednesday. Night. I know it's like pushing on the crack of Chris Kringle, but we're going to be doing it. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you guys for your wonderful support, uh, and all the kind words that you guys have come through for. And, uh, I don't know. I'm sure it's going to be a lot more, uh, emotional bullshit, uh, later on this week as yeah. we get closer to Christmas and what we're thankful sure. for, for this holiday season. But thank you guys so much for showing up tonight. Fuck the holidays. We got each other. Love you guys. <laughs> okay. Sluts. Good night. Uh, double try. Bye. It's a bit there. Yeah. Fuck. I pressed end already. Shit. Why didn't it go? Hi, my name is Mike and I'm addicted to wieners. <laughs>